muted. Hi, everybody, and welcome <laughs> to That Fallout Show, episode 19. That John Denner is full of ultrasight, man. Yeah, I'm Rick McVick, and with us tonight, as always, is Shaleen. Um, hi. Uh, I'm supposed to talk then, right? Yeah, yes, that's your cue. Okay. Hi. <laughs> and Vender, how you doing? Welcome, sir or madam. Ah, uh, well, it's good to be here. I feel like it's been two weeks since we've done a show. <laughs> yes. Actually, One might think four. it was two weeks. I think it's might have been four weeks. Well, anyway, we're here, and uh, boy, do we have a show for you. It's not much. We'll warn you. No, um, we do need to bring up one weird bit of housekeeping, and I just want to get it. This is an it. announcement I never expected us to have to make. It's a good, it's a good thing and a bad thing, but nonetheless, I just want to get it done straight off the bat. This is going to be our lat. No, I'm kidding. Um, so whoa, 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 <laughs> that is whoa, so cool, that whoa! Is so cool. We have hurt these people. We have hurt them. Okay, okay. It's uh, you no. know, it's April fourth. Is it April fourth? I was about to say this is going to be April fifth. No, this is gonna do be... not do this to these people. This yeah. is going to be the last time I bring this up. That's what I was about to say. Thank God. Um, so we love <laughs> fan art. We're a big fan of fan art for the show for us we've had characters done heck i've had a cat head photoshopped on my wall before um we love the fan art so please if you feel the urge or the desire to make things like that for us and send it to us because you dig our show or something that's awesome we love it great fantastic what we ask that you guys not do please don't do is when you make fan art that has our branding or name and then try to sell it in your own stores. That's what we don't want you guys to do. Um, it's happened, and we asked that person to stop, and they did. Um, so thank you for that. Thank you very much for that. We really appreciate that you did stop. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, if you do want to make things, give it away. Just give it away. Um, let us know about it if you are doing it. It would be great to you know see some of the things that you're creating. But please don't sell it. Because you're using our branding, our stuff, to make <coughs> pocket money for yourself. And that's mm -hmm. just not cool. and We haven't even monetized the show. We yeah. haven't. We haven't. We you're doing something we haven't show. even done. <laughs> we haven't even done that. So please. And, uh, you know, like, while your own artistic creations are, are your own, um, the logo in which you put on them, if it is, you know, WJLG or That Follow Show or GameStack, then it becomes ours. <laughs> so. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so, um, anyway, now that that's out of the way, on with the show. You can help promote this show by creating fan art and selling it on your own store. No, uh, by creating fan art. <laughs> no, no, no. And sharing it on your social media, hey. like your Instagrams or Twitters or Facebook -eths things. You can send us email like we have the emails tonight to read. You can like, mm -hmm. subscribe, and retweet our thingies. And more, most importantly... And more important than all of the other, those other ones, tell your friends about our show. If you have friends that listens to listens to podcasts and they're fans of Bethesda or Fallout, tell them about our show. It means a lot. I've got it. I've got it. What? Make a sign at your Fallout seventy six camp. Listen to that. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> yes, everybody who is listening right now, if you play Fallout tonight or in the in the coming oh, days, that's that was so our challenge smart. this time. Yes. That is the challenge. Yes. That is the, yeah. we're we're starting the show with the challenge tonight. Y your challenge is to create a f that Fallout show sign and put it on your camp. To promote our show on Fallout seventy six. <laughs> it's brilliant, Shaleen. Um, awesome. Listen to Game Stack is also acceptable. Acceptable. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um. So yeah, that's and then you can host us on Twitch. That would mean, that would mean the world to us. We're so um, shameless. Uh, Shaleen, could you turn your mic up just a smidge? Just a smidge, just a smidge. Maybe. Which direction is up? <laughs> Thank you. Um, what'd you that say? That way. That way. Oh, uh, which way is up? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, guys. The direction uh, this towards. Show. Did I turn it down? The direction towards. That's Canada. good. Um, That's good. That's better. It's better. It's great. Okay. It's wonderful. It's fantastic. So tonight... the same way your toilet flushes, Shaleen. That's not actually true. Don't follow those directions. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Uh, tonight we've got some news. We have some gameplay stories. We three have been playing Fallout 76 like crazy, cray, cray, cray. Mm -hmm. Is that what them kids say today? Cray, cray. Um, we have. <laughs> I always forget to do that. We have some 
uh, a recap of uh, last week's challenge, which was uh, go spelunking in the Wendigo cave. And uh, we have a new challenge, which I guess we've already kind of addressed. Um, and then we have the lore for this evening and the weapon of the week and then some listener emails. But before we get into all that, we have some five-star review shout-outs. Take it away, Vendortron. Well, guys, we've got three five-star review shout-outs from the U.S. Uh, we have, oh, hey, it's me, 21. Thanks for the five-star review shout-out. We also have Nikki Valentin. Not Valentine, Valentin. And our tried and true favorite, the man who created a lot of the art for us without logos on it, Ben Yannick. Hey. Thank you for the five star re- review. Shout out, Ben. My question is, I would you... like to just say, uh, for the record, and I say this in a loving way, Ben, you're a butt. This... <laughs> Did you it guys took him read this his long? review? No, no well, I don't have the we don't have the review in the show notes. What does it um, say, he's, Shaleen? He's he's did the list thing. He was like a great <laughs> podcast about the Great Wall. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, we can always count on Ben to keep things real. <laughs> if you uh, if you would like to leave a five star review shout out like our lovely listeners, all you got to do is go to iTunes and search uh, We Just Love Games or GameStack Podcast or that Fallout show and leave us a five-star review shout-out, and we will make sure that we mention your username and perhaps your lovely little message on the show. We also have some new people to the Discord community. Uh, That is ever-growing, and uh, we've got quite a list this week. To start off, we've got Skyforge, 1928, uh, Live Strong. Wow. Captain Coots, Blaze Ben, Tune Seven, The Dancing Baptist, <laughs> Ivy Killa, Mr. Matt Ray, and this is going to be a tough one. Neph this Nile. Nephthys Nile. Nephthys Nile. Nephthys. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so those are all of the people that come uh, have come into the Discord in the last two weeks. If you would like to get access to the Discord. Uh, all you got to do is send us a personal message and we'll make sure you get the link. You can also find it on our social media. And uh, that is probably the best place to get a hold of us in real time and get involved with the discussion that's going on off air around all of the games that you love. I uh, I just looked. Our numbers are up like around 2.30 for the, for the yeah. little Discord that could. The little so, Discord that could. Yeah, I know, hey? Um, I also want to say, you know, hello to everyone in chat. I see uh, Dragon Craze, Archon, uh, and Taz in the chat. And Slip and Trippin' 84. And the Our Dead boys. Light. I like the fact that I like seeing new names. I like seeing mm-hmm. new people in the chat, like uh, the Dead Plant. Um, haven't seen that guy before. So it's good that they're here. <laughs> Please, somebody water him. Before. Yeah, but see, I forget <laughs> these things, or I'm terrible with names in general. So it's like he's here for the first time. Yes. Yeah, I actually have to introduce myself to Rick every time. <laughs> I'm actually... Who are you? Three. Who are you in my house? <laughs> um, so anyway, let's get on with the news, shall we? Breaking news! The dead plant is actually Dat Doctor TFA, but he just changed his username. Oh, okay. Oh. So regular then. So yeah. I, I know who he is. He doesn't matter. <laughs> I'm still gonna it. forget. I'm still gonna forget. <laughs> oh it, dear. It's one of the show yeah. where everybody knows your name. Anyway, <laughs> Shaleen, what happened in the world of Fallout? Dude, I don't even know, man. It's been. <laughs> I rely on you for this stuff. What are you doing? <laughs> Well, I've got a little bit. I've got a little bit of news. Um, just a bit. Just a bit. And I wanted to open off with the the latest Inside the Vault um, article. The vault. It's really convenient of Bethesda to release these on Thursdays before <laughs> before we do the show. So right. <laughs> whoever whoever timed that, thank you. Thank you for making this happen for us. I still say it's part of the uh, Bethesda slash podcast conspiracy and that they listen to the show and they plan everything around the show yes our ideas about what we want to see in the wasteland and then we deliver that news back are you looking at the same article that i'm looking at shaleen probably do you do you they've their articles (laughs) broken it is broken yes (laughs) their patch notes article 
is broken. <laughs> it wasn't broken when it's, I first opened it, but it's broken now. It reminds yeah. me of like, Flash, inside the vault, looking beyond patch 8, April 4th, 2019. Flash, inside the vault, because everything's capitals. And then in between <laughs> them, it's like, title, tagline, blurb. Like, this is funny. You put the... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is some broken HTML um, right there. That is, well, I'll tell you what that is. Those are H tags that have been broken. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, what do you got, Shaleen? Well, um, on the last one, which we're really not going to go over, they talked a little bit about the lying low quest line that's going to be coming to uh, to Fallout 76. Mm -hmm. It's very, very nice. Um, but the biggest thing is that they are going to bring repair kits. I think this is probably the biggest news out of the whole drop. And I, I'm just going <clears> to <throat> read a little segment here. Repair kits are new utility items that will help you spend more time looting and shooting and less time toiling away at a workbench fixing your gear. We've received lots of requests for repair kits and we're excited to add them in the weeks following patch 8. These will come in two forms, basic repair kits and improved repair kits. Repair kits cannot be dropped, sold to vendors, or traded with other players. Here's a rundown of how they work and how you can get a few of your own. And basic repair kits are a single-use item. You can use those to restore one of your items to 100% condition. And that does not spend any of your crafting materials. You would just uh, go to your Pip-Boy, find the item, inspect it, and select a new repair kit option. And hmm. your item will be instantly repaired. You can also uh, use them at a workbench um, or at any workbench. What was that? Oh, nothing. Continue. Okay. And improved um, basic repair kits will be available. Um, it says unlockable in the atomic shop mm. using atoms you've purchased, or you can earn them for free by completing in-game challenges. Oh, I like that. Because <laughs> I imagine that there'll be like 500 atoms in the atomic shop. Um, uh, the dead plant I have a says, feeling they're going to be expensive. The, mm -hmm. the dead plant says uh, they had me at repair kit and lost me at Adam shop. And Tasmany yes. points out that this is kind of like a pull from New Vegas. Um, mm -hmm. And he, he's absolutely right. I saw an article today, too, that was kind of like so much for the non-cosmetic items not being in the Adam shop ever routine. Because uh, these are now... Guys, I'm sorry. I have to take a work call. Oh, that's fine, Shaleen. I'll just keep on with the news for you. Who's... Um, I would, uh, yeah, you know, and I wonder what, how they decided they were going to do the Atomic Shop. Like, how they were going to decide on prices and stuff. I, I I don't know. I find a lot of it to be a little bit expensive. It is a little expensive. Um, but I still like the fact that you can earn this in-game. And the language here is interesting. The repair mm -hmm. kits will be unlockable in the Atom Shop. So is that like a plan? I kind of feel like it's a plan. You learn how to make the perhaps, repair kits. Perhaps. I don't know though. Yeah. There is another there is another uh part of this patch update that I actually really like, Rick. What? Fill your memory books with the new functional camera that's coming. Oh right. This is coming I'm I think, excited. in May. Yeah, April sixteenth. The camera is a new item. You can equip it like a weapon, but instead of firing bullets, you'll be oh, taking snapshots 16th. of uh the wonderful wonderful world of fallout 76 so yeah i uh i was i was thinking this is actually kind of a brilliant idea they've already got rather than going into the menu hitting z and then mm -hmm. bringing up or i guess it would be t going to photo yeah. the photo mode and then uh, yeah. now you just equip a camera and then yeah they do have an emote that allows you to pull out a camera i i actually just purchased that and i used it last night when we were playing um but this camera is functional not only by itself but it comes with some new quests and challenges and can be modded to add different lenses so that's really cool you might wow. be able to do like a fisheye or some sort of wide angle or telephoto something like that hopefully you two we'll will see. get me killed with this camera oh you guys you guys are going to be shooting super mutants and i'm just going to be taking pictures of you shooting super mutants oh it's going to be bad i mean shaleen's just going to be taking like i'll be fighting with my you know 50 cal machine gun like clack, 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 and they're just scorch beasts and scorch coming and then i'll be like shaleen where are you and i'll turn around and she'll be like taking pictures yeah. of like Hold still the wall. please but if you think about it rick the only time we ever take pictures is when things are calm and we're not being attacked by anything. That's because so, it's 
it's a cumbersome system. I believe that's the only reason why is because it's a cumbersome system. And the second they make yeah. it more convenient for you guys to make uh, to take pictures, you'll be taking more pictures in the heat of battle. You'll be like a combat wartime photographer, you know? <laughs> yeah. Well, you know what? You can thank us when we get awesome snapshots of you killing things with your giant gun. So... You know, it's actually kind of interesting. They are setting up this game for role-playing purposes, that's for sure. Because now you can be the Wasteland War Correspondent. Mm-hmm. Going live to the Wasteland War Correspondent, Vendatron. Vendatron, how's mm-hmm. the world on the ground? It'll just be like you on the ground, irradiated, mutated. Yeah, Dead Plan in the chat says, I can't wait for legit selfies. And I do hope that they add a mechanic to the camera that allows you to turn it around <laughs> and take a picture of yourself. Um, I would, I would really love that. I think that would be really cool. <laughs> um awesome yeah so if you want some more information on the patch notes uh check out bethesda's website uh bethesda.net fallout.bethesda.net and um most of these patches will be coming soon i guess um so the the camera will be april 16th the april one 16th yes the one that's coming before that that i'm most excited for is sheer terror mm-hmm. that's coming on april 9th and that's where you get to kind of have this, like, um, a beautiful mind with, like, the paper string or the string going across the different, like, uh, points on a map to kind of figure out where this weird cryptoid is. Um, mm-hmm. And you get to find – it's I, I believe it's a whole quest line trying to find the new cryptoid and, uh, and uh, kill them. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's exciting. I'm excited for that one. Um. Yeah. So our next story comes to us from uh, Kutaku. This is a zany Kotaku story. Zany and they're, Kutaku she's story. Talk, they're talking about um, uh, the dude that sent uh, Todd Howard a box of bobby pins. Have you, have you heard about this, Rick? Yes, I was watching the PAX East video when he talked about his box of bobby pins. So, I mean, we, we all know about bobby pins, right? They're... They're a patched, repatched, and patched again item that's in the Fallout 76 universe, and we've seen it in Fallout 3 and Fallout New Vegas, etc. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, some people send letters and thank you notes to creative directors, and <laughs> others send, you know, messages in social media. However... <laughs> What's in the box? What's in the box? To quote Brad Pitt. <laughs> yeah. You don't want to uh, know, Todd. What is it? <laughs> Bobby pins. No. Yes, exactly. A Fallout 76 player decided that they were going to send a box of Fallout 76 Bobby pins um, to Todd Howard but that at Bethesda in a very passive aggressive way to making their point around the issues that we've been experiencing with Bobby pins. <laughs> um, and I quote from T- Todd Howard. He says, some people send letters, others very creative. <laughs> I got a box of bobby pins the other week and that said that said weigh these whoever sent that that was the most creative letter i ever got <laughs> <laughs> so i think that that's pretty cool um and i think it really actually sends a, a strong message because you know people aren't going to read a letter um they just go on the pile with the other letters so you know once you get past security and it's not a bomb <laughs> and then you actually weigh it and you open it and realize that it's bobby pins <laughs> It's okay. Shrapnel. Bobby pins are shrapnel. I'm sure he found that very amusing. I wonder oh, if I'm he sure. scrapped them. <laughs> they probably uh... All I know is nobody's locked file cabinet is safe. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Everybody at Bethesda Studios, you need to change your locks. Maybe get keypads instead or something. <laughs> right. Cuz uh keypads cannot be flummoxed by a a mini game. Yes, that's true. Yeah. All the hacking Got to get everything in double brackets so you can reset your tries, you know? I found the most efficient way to hack terminals is to try three times, then on your fourth guess, click all of the little hidden things. Yes, and then it resets them. It'll refill them, Mm -hmm. Mm yeah. And then you can go again. I love that that carried forward. I remember uh, first... Go ahead, go ahead. (laughs) I was going to see how long (laughs) we could take the silence. I remember discovering (laughs) that that for the first time. (laughs) Well, I mean, like, I, I I went through all of Fallout 3, no idea. Halfway through New, New Vegas, finally figured it out. And I was like, ah, oh, thanks to Call V Horse, who has a great YouTube series. 
I've Anyways, got... welcome back, Shaleen. <laughs> Hi. Welcome back to the Hi, sorry to the show. That. Apologies. Um, we yeah, were uh, we were commenting about the camera in the patch notes. Yes, I'm pretty excited about that. Yes, Ooh. I think that it will be a great rendition to being able to capture some of those more lively uh, yes, gameplay that's scenes. What I'm for as yeah. Well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the I love taking pictures in Fallout, as these guys well know, uh, poor fellows. Every time we play together, I'm like, okay, guys, come on, squeeze in. Family, family photo. <laughs> it's just going to be a yeah. lot of photos of Vendor's dead body. <laughs> what? I, my favorite thing is is when I'm taking pictures of us and Vendor just disappears. <laughs> like the new shine. No, yeah. and, and I was That's only... That's happened on more than one occasion. <laughs> I was only saying your dead body because one, you're the one that kind of always dies, and and uh, two, Shaleen always gets you into situations where you end up dying. It's kind of right. her fault. <laughs> Maybe a little, yeah. <laughs> so, Maybe. oof. Yeah, but I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry too. <laughs> uh, Anyways, it's shall we move on with our the destination? Yes, exactly. <laughs> Uh, speaking of situations where you might die, uh, there's double XP weekends for Fallout 76 happening. So put yourself in, in some of those deadly situations, but win and get the XP. I'm trying. I'm how sorry. How is that a segue? It's been a That's hard perfect. week, <laughs> I love how terrible the segues are. You just go with it. It's fine, Rick. <laughs> I'm barely hanging on here, okay? Um, the first double XP weekend is only for the survival beta. It started on Thursday, April the 4th um, at 12 p.m. And it will end on Monday, or on Monday, April the 8th at 6 a.m. Eastern time. Oh, it's happening now. Yes, it's currently, currently underway. So oh, well, probably a... by the time you have the audio of this, it'll be already over. So sorry. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and just, uh, bye. <laughs> Rick's gone to go play survival mode. I leveled up 50 <laughs> times already. Um, I don't have a desire to play survival. I really don't. In yeah. all seriousness, though, it's hard to level up. Uh, it's it's tough. It's tough. It feels like it feels like a well paced leveling system, in a in that kind of game. It it feels pretty well paced, honestly. Mm -hmm. I feel pretty okay about the levels too. I mm -hmm. I put in maybe thirty hours, and I'm almost level fifty, which is max level. Like that's the level you have to hit to unlock a lot of end game stuff i guess mm -hmm. um and uh i'm i'm one and a half levels away from that so i feel that's a uh that's a nice coffee mug you got there shaleen oh thank you this is my god of war coffee mug it looks like the uh the um the pottery thing oh it's the, the one i'm always worried that's just the... gonna like tip over yeah. oh <laughs> in the game he smashes kratos smashes a vessel that looks very similar to this <laughs> um pretty spiffy um the second xp double xp weekend is for adventure mode and the survival beta it starts at 12 eastern time on thursday april the 25th and ends at 6 a.m eastern time on monday april 29th so that one we have time to plan for we can noise set aside some time and and do the double xp weekend excellent i don't know uh about you guys but i'll be taking advantage of this double xp weekend so uh this one's just for the survival beta rick you said that already didn't you yeah yeah well uh, yeah Looks i like don't know I'm about you guys but i could too. i could really well, we use some, some uh... single xp it's gonna be great <laughs> single it's XP. A single xp weekend yeah i don't know about you guys but i could really use some xp in real life <laughs> <laughs> uh you know what happens like, if, things are so hard right now you know yeah. what happens if you take x and p in xp switch them around and put an a in the middle right you packs. get packs oh. and it's just it's so weird that pax east game bethesda game game days just happened to, to be the next news item on our show ago. notes yeah. yeah how about that I pulled yeah. a Shaleen wow here. that's just smooth as butter there smooth. it's smooth yeah. as chunky peanut butter just as as smooth as the pot that called the kettle black. Hmm. So well, Shalene, you know what they say. What? What do they say, Vendor? Perfection is the enemy of the done. 
I'm sorry. Continue. <laughs> um, you know what we should do? Because we have a lot of uh, grammar um, police in our listener base. Uh, we should start calling, because of how Segway is spelled, we should call it uh, Segu. 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 Like some sort of pasta sauce or something. Pasta? Yeah. Ooh, well, is that Segu? Yeah. Pasta Segu. We just made a lot of people very angry. <laughs> Watch, it's going to be a recipe next on the next patch update. A recipe. More trash fire than, than usual. <laughs> well, <laughs> it's because it's we're all like so tired. I'm the only one that's like, woo! Yeah, I've been um, up since 3 a.m. It's, it's a thing. You should try sleeping. It's a good idea. Yeah, I couldn't find I couldn't find a bed though. All the beds were the ones that like have junk and on them, and they partly covered with dirt. You know, so you can't sleep on them. Mm. Yeah, you don't want to get like diseased. You don't want to yeah. get bone worms or something. Exactly. Uh, Ugh. Pax East happened, and I skipped the intro pleasantries because it was kind of. And I, let's be honest, we only really care about the Fallout seventy six aspect of this. I'm assuming. Yeah. Yep. Um, so a lot of it was stuff we already knew. We figured that we knew. Did you guys get a chance to watch these videos? Not a bit. This is no. this is my first experience. Mm -hmm. uh, I think you should narrate it in a way that I feel like I've watched the video. <laughs> so what happened was Todd Howard came out in his tight pants. <laughs> no. Um... <laughs> <laughs> in his leather tight pants that voice kills me every time yeah i feel like we should do a late night show for oh. follow and you could just do the whole thing in that voice oh, i had such a good joke to follow up with shillian but i can't do it oh yeah anyway so one of the initial opening questions he would um todd was kind of directed at todd was what was it like to launch this game and todd goes it was interesting. We've had a thing. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, that's a perfect answer. Poor um, yeah. Todd, RIP. Well, seriously though, like what else do you say to that? You know? Well, yeah. You, you know, he is a truthful guy. I mean, um, I'm sure when he said it just works, I mean, he didn't say it worked great. He didn't say it worked perfectly or excellently. He said it just works. I mean, it, it works. <laughs> I mean, we read into that, like, oh, it works. And he's like, yeah, that's all it does is work. Well, it, it works. You know? <laughs> and it works. <laughs> it just works. It doesn't do anything else. Oh, it man. just works. Like, now looking back on that, you're like, ah, oh, I get it, you know. So um, one thing that they did point out, which I didn't even think about, they had zero unplanned downtime. And that's kind of big in, mm -hmm. uh, you know, when you're setting up brand new server farms and things like that. Um and I know a lot of you people probably have already heard this or read about it, so this might be old news, but it's new news for us, and that we do it for the three of us, none of you guys. So anyway, um, they talked a lot about their adventures in the game. They had a lot of fun experiences playing with other people, and one of the head developers said that, um, you know, it's obvious that people like nuking the White Springs. And mm -hmm. uh, one time he was with a group of people, and they had just nuked the White Springs, and a group of people had got together to kind of go looting around the area, and he said one of the one of the players was trying to teach other people how to do an exploit. And so the head developer was kind of like, "Could you could you explain that again? What's your gamer tag?" You know. <laughs> yeah. You know. So I have a feeling whatever that patch may have been, uh, it will be, or whatever that exploit may have been, it will be patched soon. <laughs> Cause oh man, he was right there, you know. Like you told one of the make, and he, <sighs> nobody knew, you know, because nobody knows who they are. Apparently, mm -hmm. Todd likes to run around in a, uh, a Nuka Girl outfit costume thing and and give people waters at the front of the Vault Seventy Six for newbies when they come out of the vault. That's cute. And I've uh, always wondered if I've run across like somebody famous or part of the dev team or somebody from Bethesda. But, you know, if we all put the signs, you know, listen to Game Stack, listen to that Fallout show, we all put those signs in front of our camps, guys. They never Let's said start you a movement. They never We're going to start a movement. Um, I think it's great. I think Billboards is, uh, is a fantastic way to advertise our show in the game. It's brilliant. It's like the most brilliant idea Shaleen has ever come up with. 
we need to have blinky lights like listen to yes. that fallout stuff and part of the challenge is to make it as obnoxious as possible so that everybody can see it from across the wasteland you need to put it right in front of the overseer's first camp i mean that's where everybody goes when they first yes. start out. you just need to put yes. a big billboard <laughs> Actually, that's not a bad idea. <laughs> like, um, I should make a point of every time I log on, I'll just have that as my camp. And, like, I'll just go there and keep the game running in the background. I don't know. And so uh, they, they went on to talk about different things like that. And one of the things that they said kind of caught my ear a bit with their design process for the game. Like, their mindset when they were building this game from the beginning. And I don't know if this accounts for some of the problems that it had, but it certainly seems like if you build something with this mindset, it might, it, well, it's going to change it. Mm -hmm. um, they said that they built, the, they designed the game with the idea of how will someone use this, you know, thing to ruin the game for someone else? How will someone use yeah. the nukes yeah. to ruin the game? How will someone use camp to ruin the game? Blah, 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 blah. They, they developed this game, a lot of this game, with that idea in mind of how will mm -hmm. someone ruin the game for someone else with this? And eventually they kind of let that go of like, ah, just put it in. We'll see how it happens and we'll fix it later. Um, because it's just a giant experiment. So um, I can't help but think that that tainted some of the uh, – the gameplay, you know what I mean? Like the slap yeah. damage and some of the weird stuff that was kind of like, you know, the stuff that they're taking yeah. out that doesn't work. Um, well, you know, Rick, I got to say, like, here's this is that that moment where Bethesda comes back for me as the good guys. Oh, of course. Um, <clears throat> and I mean, I'm not I, I, I won't deny the fact that there is a now a capitalist corporate side to Bethesda Game Studios. But. When you hear Todd Howard speak, um, and I think about the developers and all of the people in the community that have made this possible, I realize that they designed and and um, created a game that the community wanted, not what they thought the community wanted. So and so I think, and like for me, I this is probably one of the first instances where I've ever seen a big game retailer develop a game that people spoke out for and actually wanted. And I think that's why they had such a rocky launch because they were just listening to what people wanted and they were trying to, you know, please their audience. And it's it kind of goes in part with what you were saying about how there was some, you know, technical problems around keeping people safe in the environment as well. And, and they totally designed that around the player experience, uh, which I think is great. And coming in with that mentality, of course, yeah, it's totally going to be a rocky start. Uh, I'm glad that they worked out a lot of things and the game is running a lot better now, as I always had suspected that it would. Um, so I, I wonder what people are saying now that we're bashing it at the beginning. I just wonder. <laughs> They're because there was just all this oh, outcry yeah. against it. And now suddenly, yes. suddenly it's quiet. Nobody's complaining. Um, Everybody's still complaining. Yeah. <laughs> and it's, but, you know, I honestly think it's the people that, the people that are complaining, um, we're going to complain anyway. Mm -hmm. I think people had genuine arguments against the game. But uh, I think, Shalene, wasn't it you that said that half the people that were yelling about it probably hadn't even played it? I, I yeah I, I really think that's true I, I do agree with that because if you look at anyone who had genuine complaints that were accurate and I'm pointing to myself because you know I had genuine issues yeah. um, they are fixed and all of a sudden uh, the game's fine to play so it's not that I haven't you know I, I dislike the game as a whole but mm -hmm. um, and there's still aspects that are kind of troublesome but i can't remember what they are you know what i mean the fun outweighs yeah. those little those little issues and uh you know you're right you know bethesda has fixed a lot of the stuff that they said they're going to fix and they even talked about the um they're trying to figure out ways to Im to have more immersive camp building um where they they've seen camps where they were like you know actually one of the devs was like one of the head devs was like uh who put that building there that building wasn't supposed to be there. They're supposed to run this stuff by me before they put it in the game. And then he goes, and it was somebody's oh, camp. That's someone else's camp. <laughs> um, that's great. And so it's like so good. It just blends right in. <laughs> yeah. And they, you know, they were talking about all the stuff that they didn't realize people would 
be able to do, like building in weird places. And they're like yeah. sitting there like, huh, how'd they do that? I, it's true, you know, like I look at Shalene's, I look at Shalene's little train station that she's got running over yeah. there by <laughs> White Spring, and it totally looks like it's supposed to be there. Yeah, and so um, they're trying to make it so base building is a bit more immersive. They're trying to work out some kinks there because it's all about performance. They would, yeah, they would love to have, um, you know, they don't want to limit the stash. They don't want to limit the camp building, but they're they're they don't want servers to crash really. So they're putting the brakes on. Other than like other servers, they're like, hey, do all, you know, arc, do all the stuff. And then all of a sudden, boom, and the server is gone. And you're like, well, we're going to be down for three days um, <laughs> re- re- redoing our entire game. And uh, they don't want that kind of stuff to happen. So they are slowly letting the brakes off. And I think that's a really good approach. It mm-hmm. feels bad. It has for, to be iterative. Yeah. It yeah, feels bad for, sure. for us at the beginning. But, um, you know. But There's like we as gamers, we come at it with a different lens, right? Exactly. We, we come, come at it, it from the, the lens that we want to hit the ground running like we have with every other game that we've played through our entire lifespan. Like, yeah. you know, and and I, I think that people expected that here. And I, I did it first and then I kind of reflected on that. And I realized, you know, like this isn't going to be <laughs> this isn't going to be smooth at the start. <laughs> Yeah, I think it's a lot better now, though. And I would like to say, though, I would like to say, Bethesda, if you're listening, which you probably are. are, um, (laughs) Shout us out once in a while. It would be really nice. It would be really nice to have robot butlers. Just saying. So if I could if I could go to a train station and buy myself a robot and put it in my house so he can just like walk around. And then when I get home, he's like, great dings. It'd be great be great so your you know the justice that you want for your kind is to be yeah purchased is... as servants well i mean i, mean, I really just want a roommate your people I, w- I just want a roommate it's like <laughs> i mean we know that they're going to market it as like you know your own wasteland butler or something i mean i know that Shalene would drop all the atoms for a little mr gutsy and a bow tie and a little 100 percent. see yeah. I would I would almost pull out the credit card for that. Pick pick my uh to pick my crops, um, you know, help feed or defend my yeah. ramen that gets killed because my turrets are too derpy to do anything. Poor Bessie, R.I.P. I still can't believe times. you can milk them. It's so great. It's so it's fun. like a oh whole new world. I cannot wait to talk about Shalene milking my cow. Anyway, um <laughs> there was no pleasant way to say that phrase. So anyway, Apparently, millions of people are playing this game. I don't know if that's true, but that is what they said at PAX East. They said they had millions of players playing. And they didn't say accounts. They didn't say millions of accounts. They said millions of players, which I found interesting. Todd would not lie to you. Todd would not lie. Um, The vault raids. There will be raids in vaults. So my guess is there will be no human NPCs in those. (laughs) If we're going to be raiding in them. Um, They will be instanced. They said that when they first started working on the system, because they haven't have they don't have any architecture for instancing anything in this game. When they first started working on it, they had a queue system. You had to queue and wait to get into the vault raid. Oh, and they were like, "Interesting, this is, this is bad. This is really bad." Can you imagine just like standing in line in the game? <laughs> what well, happened with Division One? In Division <laughs> One, you have to access a computer to like be to like start the game. Do you remember mm-hmm. that? You go through the there little were orderly bit of lines. <laughs> they had lines of people like in a straight line of doing jumping jacks because they couldn't all access the computer. And so um so that was so yeah they're like no we're not gonna do that. And so they're hmm. instant they're working on getting the vault raids to be instanced, which I think is fantastic. Um, hey I got a question. I have an answer. Is, is Fallout 76 available in VR now? No. no. Oh I wish that it was. Why? That would be super cool. I don't know. I, I I feel like VR is really coming around. I'm really excited for No Man's Sky VR. I'm probably mm. going to get a one of the Nintendo Labo VRs. <laughs> I mean, like, I'm, I'll probably never buy one unless I have, like, a dedicated room for VR. You don't have to. The HP, uh, I think the one that works for Microsoft, it's, like, made by HP, doesn't require a room to do it. Right. Th- that's the one that you have. Mm-hmm. Well, my wife yeah. has it, yeah. Yeah. She plays the Beat mm. Sabers, whatever that game is. Um, anyway, what I want to talk about though is, is, uh, more along the lines of, um, 
up your alley, vendor, because it's about a vendor. It's about the legendary vendor. Ooh. Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to, what's the word I'm looking for? Manifest Vera de Milo. Do those big legendary pieces of armor and weapons just weigh you down? Well, now you can trade them in for tokens at the legendary, well, not now, but you will be able to, to trade them in for tokens at the legendary vendor. Um, yes. So for those of you that got, <laughs> especially for the uh, Fashnash, uh, Fashnash, Fashnash. <laughs> um, so when you, you know, you tagged the Scorch Beast, if you were lucky enough, and you got like a bloodied baton. Thank you. Thank you, Scorch Beast. Thank you for my bloodied baton. Um, so what you, you know, what are you supposed to do with it? You can't scrap it for parts. You can't learn anything from mm-hmm. it. So you just kind of throw it on the ground. So what you can do now is trade those in for tokens for uh, legendaries you do want that the vendor is selling. Or I think it's all speculative still. You can roll. Say you have a submachine gun that has a legendary you don't like, like bloodied. Say you're not running a bloodied build. You want something different. You can re-roll that legendary, I, I'm assuming, with the tokens that you got from trading in other legendaries to try to get a legendary um, perk that you want. So they're trying to have it a bit more flexible since you can't really do anything with them, which I think is pretty cool. I think it's smart. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's coming. Uh, I forget when that is that legendary vendor is coming, but they're planning more seasonal events. They said that the events around the map, like the timed events are not popular. People aren't engaging with them as much as they had hoped. Um, and that they were so impressed with the turnout for the Fosnate Day parades. Uh, they are definitely planning more seasonal events. Good. They, they, uh, they said, like, most conversations about things in the game where we're like, oh, we're going to have this parade and people go around and do this. They said there's always one guy who raises his hand in the back of the room and is like, so what if what if I knew Kelvisha? And uh, they're like, well, I guess we're going to find out. <laughs> so <laughs> someone ended up nuking Helvisha during a, a few of the parades, and it was almost impossible. So um, we will be able I – mean- to see yeah. more of those events come up and and let's be honest that was fantastic it got mm-hmm. everybody out there for some stupid it was masks. great it was really fun it yeah was... i i actually want like events for every special holiday like like you know like the statue of westminster day <laughs> what you know i want like westminster Abbey? margaret thatcher day i want Ugh. them to be an event for that Oppress and everybody. Like, winston churchill day <laughs> can we just like make all the holidays uh. that'd be great <laughs> Winston Hanukkah, Churchill Day, Christmas, Ukrainian Christmas, Chinese New Year's. Winston Churchill Day? Yeah, I'm sure there's a Winston Churchill Day. There probably is. <laughs> I don't even know what you do. <laughs> anyway, I don't know. Wear round glasses and smoke guitar. a big stick. Yeah, that's smoke Teddy cigars. Roosevelt. Oh, shoot. That's right. Oh, man. Why did I even come on the podcast today? <laughs> Why couldn't we do the Jeopardy today? I feel like I'm on fire with this. <laughs> um, Speaking of things on fire, guys, besides the show, oh, um, um, the Atomic Shop okay. is on fire with sales. Ballistic bargains, guys. Cash in. Cash in all your atoms. It's a cash cow. Uh, you guys, you guys want to know what's going on in the Atomic Shop? I do. This is kind I of really your thing. Do. Yeah. So, so first of all, there's some free items that you can collect. Make sure that you grab them because they're only available until April 9th. These and that is going to run out of this digital item. They're going to run out, guys. Run over to the Atomic Shop right now and get your copy of a pair of Vault Tech approved photo mode frames and a party invitation poster, which wow. I have in my house. And I just got the frames last night. So plan on using those today at some point. Um, there are also some item sales and removal. So anything that goes that is on the way out of the atomic shop, uh, they often will discount. Um, so there are some things that are already kind of gone. I won't list those, so I won't disappoint you. But I do want to say that the Vault Tech bomber jacket is now half price at Ooh. 500 atoms, and that leaves today, you guys, April 5th. Uh, the West Virginia trucker cap also on sale from uh, 600 atoms down to 180. Uh, that leaves today as well as the gray Pip-Boy paint 
uh, that you can get. Leaving tomorrow is the Vault Tech pajamas, which actually looked really good, and I almost bought them. I probably will try to get them this weekend. I'm not sure. Uh, the White Shag carpet floor and foundations will be leaving on April 6th, as well as our Future Begins photo mode frame. Leaving on April 7th is the American Patriot power armor paint, the camouflage suit, and the leather cap. And then on the 8th, we have the postal uniform, which, Shaleen, I think you bought, hey? I did. It was so cheap. I couldn't pass it up. I've wanted it ever since they introduced it because, you know, one of my two jobs is the post office. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I really wanted it, but it was so expensive. But now it was yeah. on sale for 210 atoms. Yeah, it was originally uh, uh, listed at 700 atoms and, and is now marked down 70%, which is pretty amazing. So you can grab that before April 8th. You can also grab the four poster bed for 490 atoms and the military officer uniform, uh, which is actually really cool, except it's quite expensive. The clothes are quite expensive. They are. Um, yeah. Leaving on April 9th is the Nuka-Cola stash box, as well as the welcome home mat and sign. So make sure that you get get your hands in on those on those uh, bargains if you if you can. There are some new items coming to the shop uh, pretty soon. Uh, I think actually they're already here. The Vault Tech starter bundle, uh, which includes all kinds of uh, Vault Tech things like the uh, Fat Man paint, hunting rifle paint, paint for the laser gun, the laser armor, metal armor, combat armor. Uh, you can also get uh, paint for your Pip Boy uh, and your pant suit and your short suit as well. And they also have uh, Vault Tech camp bundles as well. So you can get modern linoleum flooring and foundations, uh, an overstuffed stuffed chair which looks really cool the uh, patio table and uh, small generator and water purifier as well as a new stash box and some string lights um, there were some items that were added in the previous update that are still available for purchase that include uh, a tour guide outfit some west virginia neon billboards and ceiling lights uh, mini death claw statue which is so cute it's i bought really it cute. i bought it it was great uh, i just got to get some plastic to be able to to get it going uh the the garahan excavator power armor paint set is still available vintage linen coat coat uh wood inlay lever action rifle paint that's pretty i, I, I can did see that. that yeah the doughboy pip boy paint as well as the red enamel cooking I stove want it. Mm, it's so, so pretty bad. as i dubbed the shaleen 5000 so go out and get that for a total of 300 atoms i can't believe how cheap that is uh, I feel like it should be more because it's an appliance. I may have to actually purchase that so that I can always have it. I wish... but like, like, can't you blueprint it though? No, not if you haven't bought it. Because it. I haven't unlocked it in the Atom shop. Yeah, I... but isn't it weird? Like, you can go and get a uh, military, a military set of clothing, like a military uniform, and it's like eight hundred and ninety atoms. Mm -hmm. But then you can go and get a red, red enamel cooking stove for three hundred atoms. Well, yeah, like, it's, it's the military. I mean, they have to like go through and like do testing and well, get the and right just the toilet blend. seats are two hundred dollars. Remember the the you don't remember <laughs> the the toilet seat controversy? Nope. Yes. Yeah, the the military was buying really like out, expensive outrageously toilet expensive seats. toilet seats. Um, yeah. The, the one thing I did want to say was I feel like the stove, the red enamel stove, should just look fixed. So I think it'll like Yeah, that. like what's with like, the half the, hinge? The door back like, on. come on, just put it back together. Like, you should be able to buy these things new, right? Eh. Is there a warranty? Can we take it back? Like, yeah. I will say, though, one of the best items that I've purchased so far in the Atomic Shop, you guys, is the Alpine Horn. Oh, it's so good. It's so good. It's this massive, massive horn, and it comes with a mannequin of a man in a wonderful, like, tweed, you know, vest, jacket thing. And uh, apparently in, in one of the next patch updates, they're planning on uh, oh. increasing the volume of the horn, <laughs> as I would expect, because when I, when I blew on it, when you guys were there, you didn't even hear it. No, yeah. So... So there, there's an issue with that. I hope they fix it. You can also get the diamondized face paint, uh, which, by the way, and you guys will see tonight, I just discovered how to add face paint. <laughs> Jolene, there's all kinds of makeup. Just saying. Yeah. Oh, boy. Just it out there. I, I think, actually, Jim Justice is wearing a bit of guy liner. I think so, too. 
<laughs> I thought he had some like pink eyeshadow on too. He may, yeah. I yeah. <laughs> you can also get the Ultrasight Prototype Power Armor Paint, the uh, Prepper Trapper Outfit, whichever that is, the Corf Vega Large Water Purifier, Blood Wash Combat Armor Paint, Waffle Bat Skin, uh, the Tactical Dagger, and the I Survived Photo Frame. Can I so just... that is everything that's coming through in the Atomic Shop uh, this this week. I am super excited that they are giving us wiffle ball bats to play with. I know, it's right? Funny. Uh, I haven't seen one yet. Yeah, I, well, I don't think they're out yet, but um, I uh, I love wiffle ball bats because they just it's such a goofy idea. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like the commie whacker. Kind of, yeah. It's just longer. And there's and made the out of nostalgia plastic. of like you know hitting your siblings with with the wiffle bat. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> good good memories of backyard wiffle ball bat playing with the fam there. Um. But uh, awesome. I uh, I still have a hard time like wanting to. Sp it's so weird. We can sit back and we can criticize like the the manufactured rarity of digital items, and even the value of those things, which can be a little absurd. But then when like we see them, we're like, oh yeah, I think I might buy that. Yeah, like I want that. <laughs> oh my god, look at those it's pajamas. So <laughs> I think it's just like the exclusivity. Like, oh, I uh, I bought this, you know, and not everybody did. I mean, that's just all it is. But at the end of the yeah. day, it's about fun. And I feel like if you're having fun, then it's worth the money. Mm -hmm. You know? I, I do feel like it's a little bit more difficult to earn atoms than it is to spend them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Uh, well, and I yeah. think that they should make that a little bit more balanced, well, but I, that's it, just my opinion. They won't because it it's real money. So they they want incentive for you, they want it to be an incentive for you to go out and drop five actual dollars to make those atoms faster than just blowing you know just grinding. Uh, the, the atom game. economy does not make a ton of sense to me. No, it doesn't to me either. It's geared towards microtransactions. Oh, of course, I mean, which of course, yeah, yeah the, they have to make money, I guess, it, but. It, in Guild Wars, you don't you you uh you pay for things in the micro uh, in microtransactions using gems, and so like certain some things cost like a hundred or two hundred gems, and you can convert in game gold to that, and in game nice. gold is in game gold is tough to get because it it goes copper silver then gold and a hundred copper goes to one silver a hundred silver goes to one gold, or it's a thousand mm. I forget anyway, it's a thousand gold to make one gem. Hmm. It's an astronomically ridiculous price to make in-game currency into gems, and it's almost impossible to do so. So they, it, you basically have no choice but to spend, for the most part, money on the microtransaction store there. Um, Bethesda is a lot easier to earn in-game currency to purchase stuff on there than any other. Yeah. I mean, Shalene, you remember how hard it was to earn uh, keys in the division? Yeah, yeah. Like. That's super tough. You were lucky to get one. And mm -hmm. so, um, and even that, to get one key to open up a chest to buy. Um, and then you had the, to get the 10, chest is just, yeah. You had to get 10 of the like pieces to put together one key. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then you could open one chest. <laughs> yeah. And so uh, Fallout's actually pretty generous with, with their store. Yeah. When I got that, what was that pick that you could get in Skyrim? The pick of destiny? <laughs> The pick? That's good. Oh, the pick axe. That's, good, that's that's really good. You're welcome. No, there was like that, like that. I don't know. It was used for lock picking, and it was. Oh, like, oh the skeleton yeah. key. Mm -hmm, the skeleton key. Yeah, 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 yeah. Anyways, I wish you could get something like that in Fallout because I freaking hate oh. picking locks. I hate it. Mm -hmm. I just like go through bobby pins like nobody's business because I don't have the patience to you know tediously you know adjust it ever so, but. Anyways, speaking. That was so great yesterday, man. When uh, I was like, "Rick, open this door," he comes and unlocks the door for me, and I go <laughs> through the door, and I walk out the side, and there was an open way to get in there, like literally, like two feet away. I did the same thing too last night in that hospital. There was a door that was locked, okay, <laughs> and right next to the door was this giant gaping hole in the wall. Uh -huh. And I'm standing there and I'm picking the lock. I'm picking the lock. I'm it like, was a level ah. three and I was like, Rick, come get this door. <laughs> like, okay, Shaleen. Oh, it's brutal. And then Rick was like, hey, how did you get in this room? The door's locked. I'm like, oh, I just went through the hole in the wall. <laughs> Secret tunnels. <laughs> oh, that's good. 
<laughs> hey, it's almost like we should we should do the gameplay segment. So, uh, Shalim, um, I'll tell you what, Vendor, why don't you go first since me and Shalim's stories are kind of intertwined. Well, all of them are intertwined. Like we've They're all, all intertwined. Together. I think that we should just throw everything into a bottle and shake it up and then just play. All right. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll start rambling here. Mm -hmm. So uh, I got to say, one of the coolest aspects of this game, exploring Appalachia, especially in the Cranberry Bog, are the surface-to-air missile launchers. <laughs> there, for those of you who haven't been down there yet, there are these turrets that you can repair with like some steel and circuitry and some uh, hope. Mm -hmm. And when you repair them, they just attack and murder kill everything that is unfriendly. And so, you know, last night specifically, it, we were talking about, we went down to Fort Defiance and it was during one of the events. So we're like, so I repair I repair every surface to air missile that I see just because it's a courtesy. It makes the cranberry bog a safer place a little bit for everyone who's there when they're up and running. I mean, and these things volley out missiles with like a hellish hate towards anything that is like un American almost, you know? Um the Brotherhood <laughs> of Steel just like they're like, let's put the attitude of prime in this thing and give it like an unlimited amount of rockets to fire. <laughs> and so uh, I repair this thing. And Shaleen's like, what does this button do? And I was like, well, it calls a Scorch Beast. And she's like, and she hits the button. And uh, a Scorch Beast appears. And she's like, where did this thing come from? And I was like, you just shoot it. And I love pushing buttons. I can't help it. And about... There's a button to push. I got to push the button. So she pushes the button. The Scorch sports Beast. Scorch Beast. The Scorch Beast comes. <laughs> and so uh, we kill it, and this surface to air missile is like foo, 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 and just hitting it with all kinds of rockets. And it finally dies, and we're all like, whew, good. And then we look up at the top right corner of the screen. It's like, prepare for wave two. <laughs> so he's like, what did I do? We ended up fighting three Scorch Beasts, but that surface to air missile thing, like that, that, like, that was such an assist. It was really nice. Oh, it was amazing. <laughs> Do you realize what you've done? <laughs> it's, well, it's really, and I only had close yeah. range stuff, so I was like <laughs> zero help fighting the Scorch Beast. Well, guys, bring it down. Yeah. Bring it down. I mean, if we're on the topic of buttons, I still don't know what that button did in that porta potty. I don't know either. I you know. just and like Bethesda or anybody, if you're listening, I would love to know. I can't. Wait. I'm sure. Like I'm like sitting there. Chick -chick 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 and there's like nuclear bombs going off on the other side of the map. You know, I'm just like, what if every time you push, push it? <laughs> what if every time you push it, some random character just drops dead? <laughs> hey, you know how sometimes when you're just like walking through the forest, you get and hurt. You take random damage. Yes. Yeah, little bunny foo foo. It's like a voodoo. Breaks it's a voodoo an ankle. button. <laughs> Ow. Yeah. Um. So, so yeah, uh, the other thing I want to talk about, when we did, uh, I guess it was last Friday, you did the live stream of Fallout 76, and um, we went to uh, Lucky Hole Mine, and uh, me and Vendor had giggle fits over all of the... Oh my god, you guys, all I gotta say if you haven't gone, gone through Lucky Hole Mine, well actually, all I gotta say is if, you've, if you haven't or you have gone through Lucky Hole Mine, go back through it with a, with a gutter, with a gutter mind. <laughs> And and you will understand all of the notes, Here, all of the computer entries. Here lays our signs. queen, the first one of the wood. <laughs> it was terrible. Uh, but then me and Shaleen... such children. I love you so much. But then me and Shaleen found the secret. And it took... I was you looking... You found the secret. I was looking I through this... with you. Okay, but I was looking through this stupid cave for an hour and a half. Shaleen shows up. And then Archon shows up, and somehow through osmosis of his just knowing everything, I turn around. I literally turn around, and I'm like, "Hey, there's the door. <laughs> there's, there's the door. I need to go in." So it we go so through. Hard to find. And so we go through, <laughs> and we're looking through stuff, and we're like, "This is awesome!" And Shaleen finds a cool outfit. I'm not going to spoil her anything because this place, you have to go find <gasps> the. Oh, it's so cool. So good. So then Archon's like, "Hey, there's another." And uh, and I just was like, well, if the first trick worked and I walked 
right into the door of the next one uh, of the next secret. And I was like, Hey, I found it. <laughs> and I got to tell you that room housed the most beautiful thing I've ever seen in any fallout game ever. Really? What's that? Ever. I'm not going to spoil it. You've got to see it. Uh, it is I want to know. Thing. It's pretty cool. It's and, like, but wait till next week. And Bethesda, I beg, I, I beg you, I ask of you, I will do favors for you, Todd. Please make it something a part of the game. Whatever, just make it a part of the game somehow. I really want it to be that way. It was amazing. So, um, what did you think? I mean, did you have fun in the cave, Shalene? Or... Yeah, the spooky cave. It was a spooky, spooky cave, you guys. And I don't always cope the best with things that are spooky, um, but it's better because, you know, I was in there with friends and uh, it was good. It was a good time. I was lost a lot in this cave. I oh, had a is, hard time the one with the with the there was all the religious things. Yeah. 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 There's yeah. there's more that you haven't seen yet, Vendor. Lots yeah, well, more. we were some. It, is it the uh, the Wendigo Cave? Is that no, the one? No, no, that one's called we the were, Wendigo well, Cave. <laughs> okay, so we were in that one together. Lucky Hole. That's what it's. Lucky Hole Mine. Is that what it is? Yes. Okay, so we got to go back there we do because have to go back there. that whole other area I haven't seen, and yeah. I've gone through there three times now. I know. Once with Urchin, once with Jess, and once with you guys. I spent uh, dot 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 in the chat says Dunwick Boar is spooky. Oh yeah. Mm twisted um oh it gets worse and so yeah. yeah it took me an hour and a half to find that little secret thing it was it was not the lucky hole <laughs> <laughs> you know what yes you're right <laughs> almost almost all oop there we are um so <laughs> so <laughs> speaking of archin <gasps> <laughs> um, me and him were running around. I think, uh, Shalene, after you left that day, me mm -hmm. and him ran around some more. And we, we were like, hey, we haven't really been into the south part of the Savage Divide. And so we set off into, the, into that part of the Savage Divide. And we found catapults <laughs> up on this, like, rock. There are three skeletons laying on these uh, things. And I went to walk over to them. And then I looked. And I saw there was a cable running to a plunger, like a dynamite plunger. <laughs> and I was like, what? Archon, come here now. And so we're like, Phew. it just launched, you know. Phew, that is one. so great. And so, like, I got on the third one. I was like, launch me because I was in power armor, right? I was like, let's hot rob <laughs> this thing. And it didn't really work so well because I don't think I was standing on it right. But it was, it was, oh, it no. was yeah, it was really cool to find that. Um, and uh, we also found some more surface to air missiles and just really exploring. We killed a couple of Scorch Beasts. And we were really exploring and just kind of unlocking um, locations. Mm -hmm. One of the other funny things that happened, uh, and this is the first time this has ever happened to me in any video game ever. Um, I was running through, I think it was John Wayne. Yeah, Camp McClintock. I was running through Camp McClintock looking for Ballistic Weave. And I saw there was another person there, like on the map and stuff. I saw there was another dot. I didn't think anything of it. Um and uh, I hear footsteps, and all of a sudden I see, like, an emote happen of, like, happiness or whatever, like, thumbs up or something. And I turn around, and it was Dermetzger. Like, just, oh, complete, really? just complete random, didn't know we were on the same server. I didn't even know he had played on PC. And I don't know where, like, Dermetzger's standing there. And I'm like, hey, it's you! You know, like, the Spider-Man meme. It's like, um, <laughs> we both pointed at each other. And, uh, you know, since... I didn't have my, you know, voice stuff hooked up and Fallout 76 doesn't have text chat. <clears throat> I uh, wish it did. We I had really to talk do. via Discord. And uh, it was just really <laughs> funny because we're both like, that's so random. And I realized at this point, either their player base is so small and our fans are so loyal that now it's like it's going to be like we're running into each other. Yeah, millions of players. <laughs> you know, or uh, <laughs> or our fan base is that large where right? the more, you know, the ratio of them is in the populace playing Fallout 76 is yeah. higher. Well, you know, guys, to. I like I to know. think that the 230 plus members that we have in the Discord it's community is a small fraction, <laughs> small fraction of what we represent Maybe. in the Appalachia wasteland. Um. Tasmani showed up uh, the other day at, at my base, and that was really cool. And mm -hmm. he was checking it out. And uh, as I'm, like, building, I felt bad because, like, I couldn't talk to him. 
Um, oh yeah, Taz. I'm sorry. I was sitting on Rick's bench out front, just chilling, you know, getting a little sun, getting a little radiation. Uh, and uh, Shaleen had already gone to bed at that point, and I was just about to fast travel back to my base. So I hope that you don't feel that I ignored you. Yeah, we were like all like, all right, <laughs> we let's were go back to on camp our way and like out. <laughs> unequip and go go back to you know go to bed IRL. It's, it's funny. There's this classic method of gameplay. Uh, with everybody that I've played Fallout 76 with, it starts out, you know, in your camp and you just kind of like doing stuff. People come over for coffee. Then you decide what you're going to do and you go out, maybe do some shopping or exploring. And then once you get tired, everybody goes back to their own houses and kind of <laughs> like, you know, empties their Halloween candy bag and like sifts through it. You know, I like it. Didn't I yeah. say that? One of the reasons people don't like this game is because it reflects life too much. Yeah. yeah. One of the reasons yeah. we like it. We can't true. We can't actually hang out together, IRL. <laughs> like, not like we would. And uh, hey! no, we totally would. We totally would. But it's not like we, we can't. We physically can't hang out IRL. So, like, come over to the house. Check out the new That's brick literally walls it. I just Last built. night I went over to Rick's and I'm like, I, I brought a cobbler. <laughs> you brought I brought a starlight cobbler, you guys. <laughs> and I had my new house, and I was like, "Guys, guys, you have to see my new place." <laughs> yeah, we walked over. It was a nice, it was a nice little one room flat. Um, <laughs> you open the door, and the bench of the piano comes through the door. It was nice. It was nice. <laughs> Shalene's house is so so fantastic, you guys. It was designed by Jess and Archin, so kudos to them. And uh, you'll be able to recognize it because it's by the train tracks. At White yeah, Springs, right and it point. says Shaleen right next to the door. It's, it it's does, yeah, moved. it has my name on it. Yeah, um, <laughs> the Shaleen. You should put the in front of it. <laughs> Are you the Shaleen? I am the Shaleen. Um, I'm gonna start using that as my gamer tag. <laughs> the Shaleen. The Shaleen. All caps. T H E. <clears throat> um, Not pretentious at all. <laughs> I finally got my brick building plans, and let me tell you, it's fantastic. It looks like a little colonial house, right where it's I want. very nice. Yeah. I just, I just it's wish there was house. easier ways to make like porches and awnings. Um, it's not. I want like a roofed porch, but mm. the floor stuff doesn't really work well. And uh, so I got that, and I rebuilt. You know, when when Tash showed up, I was rebuilding my house, and and then I was piecing out. So anyway, uh. One of the other suggestions I would love to make to whomever from Bethesda is listening, whatever intern, whatever Beth intern is listening to the show. Yeah. Can you please try to suggest to someone to make the plans once you read them account bound? So that way you don't have to go and spend another 1500 caps on the brick building plans for my other character. So I can have the same plans for every character it would be fantastic. Mm -hmm. Be fan. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Cause my other character yeah. that I make won't be able to have the false nut day stuff. Oh, you're right yep so. that sucks and for somebody like you who loves making new multiple characters, characters yeah then i have to do it all over again so please bethesda once a plan is read make it account bound please please dead plant in the chat says i'll see if i see it i'll leave you a gift shaleen oh i i, I totally am gonna put like a little little uh little dresser or something a little table out on my front porch, you know, you guys can leave me little presents. <laughs> and, wait, so on your front porch, you want us to leave little brown paper bags? Yeah, like spoiled vegetable I, meat. I light them on fire <laughs> too, so you can shit. stomp them out. I was so bugged last night. I went back to my little house, and there was two little bags of spoiled stuff. <laughs> I was like, "You guys, <laughs> dropping watch some that's going to be a thing." In my yard, it's going to be a thing. Um, Every time I see someone's camp now, I'm going to leave a bag leave of spoiled, some spoiled meat. veggies. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I, I think that would be a great thing that they could add. Yeah. As far as quest lines go, I've been finding there's not a lot of side quests in this game. Um, I don't know if it's mm. I, I, like there's a few, but there's not mm -hmm. that many. There's a lot of miscellaneous like eh, quests, but there's not a lot of side questiness. There's a few that are really good, but uh I've been waiting to do a lot of my main quest with, with Shaleen. And the main quest line that we're a part of is doing some of the Brotherhood of Steel stuff. And I don't want to talk about it too, too much because um, of spoilers. But I do want to say that 
there are some aspects of, of that storyline that are heartbreaking. We know, and we know this through the lore, that at some point the Brotherhood of Steel West lost communication with the East. We just know that. Um, hearing the details about what happened in the relationships that the West and East had, it's heartbreaking because it's super scary. If you think about it, you know, in real life, like you're cut off, you know, you have no support at this point. You're on your own and facing what the Brotherhood of Steel was facing in Appalachia, you know, the, the scorched. It's like you, they just knew that they were toast, not to be too punny. But um, <laughs> the other thing that I was thinking about, there's there's a real aliens vibe. Like, not alien, but aliens, too. Um, you know, where... How so? Well, like, you know, if you, like, look at some of the holotapes or read some of the things, um, you know, there's the mystery beast, and, and uh, when one of them show up, you know, a bunch of them show up. So, like, when you, I could just see, like, Bill Paxton when a scorch beast comes up and, like, power, I'm like, game over, man, it's game over! You oh. know, um, and... Uh, R.I.P. Bill Paxton. Yeah, yeah I feel like... It's it, it it's very aliens to me. Like if they had a little motion tracker, you know, because the scorch <laughs> live underground, you know, so like they just see all the little dots coming at them. They're like, oh no, and the scorch come out of nowhere and and start taking them out and stuff. And um, one of I, the I gotta say, I gotta say, I love the fishers. Um, we oh. I I recently experienced my first fisher with you guys. <laughs> That was a good time. A little, there was a lots of radiation. There was lots of scorched, scorched beasts. It was yeah. scary. It was. Yeah. I, I've never, I didn't even know they came out of the ground before yeah. that moment. Yeah. Um, it was interesting. Man, the, 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 the trouble that we got in, Shaleen, when we were tracking comlinks down oh through the, the bog. Gracious. So I'll start, you know, you can feel, obviously, tag in with this but we're doing quests and we're going through the cranberry bog and i know it's going to be crazy so whenever i'm with friends i always drop on some power armor and either take my lmg or um, my 50 cal machine gun and i think i had yeah i had my suppression suppression lmg that day and uh it's it's an mg42 it fires 308 rounds faster than anything really and uh you know we're walking our way through the cranberry bog and it's not too bad we get to the first little camp, I guess it was, where there's a surface-to-air missile launcher, and we fix it, and a Scorch Beast comes. So, and uh, we were fighting the Scorch Beast for a while, actually, and then I looked over, and I'm like, oh, there's a surface-to-air missile launcher. And, um, you know, Shaleen's patiently waiting on the ground for it to fall so she can whack it with, its death, with, the, with her death tambo. <laughs> and, uh, and so I you know, fix the surface to air missile and it just volleys missile after missile into the scorch beast. And it finally falls down and Chilean just kind of walks up to it and goes jingle and like slashes it across the throat with her death tambo. And it <laughs> does. And, uh, so we're like, man, that was intense, you know? And I think that was your first experience with the surface to air missile launcher. Wasn't it? It was. Yes. Yeah, it was. <laughs> you were like, uh, awestruck with the glory of all the rockets it blowing up. It was pretty cool. Minute. It was the rocket's red glare. They were bursting in air. <laughs> he got all patriotic on me, you know? Uh, so, yeah, it was, uh, it was, that was like intense. And so we're making our way further down into the bog, and it's like getting hairier and hairier. And um, a, scor a, a scorch beast shows up, and then a second one shows up. And we're like, oh no. And we're like, let's run to that little, like, building out there. It was this little building out in the middle of nowhere. It was like part of a, it was like a, not an office, but it was part of like a mining company. So we run over to this building and we run in. And by that time, a third Scorch Beast shows up. And they're they're like, all three of them are strafing and, you know, leaving little... Uh, they're crop of, dusting the they're, building. They're, they're, yeah, they're crop dusting. And you're like, oh, radiation. It's all over me. It's in my mouth. Um, well, that would be Shaleen. I had power armor air scrubbers on, so... Uh, so I should wear power armor when we do these things, right? I know, I right? You're I just don't. asking for death, you know? I know. I don't um, wear power armor almost ever. Like guys a... are constantly reviving me. Mm -hmm. You're in a yeah. postal uniform. <laughs> hey, except, man, don't mess with a postal service. I, I was going to say, <laughs> except for Shaleen. rain, nor sleet, nor snow, nor uh, scorch Crop dusting. <laughs> <laughs> she, pulls out, she pulls out her death tambo, and Jim Justice goes, It's time to go postal. Yeah. I got to say, though, okay, so 
I recently bought a war drum. Uh, uh, it's like a melee weapon. Yeah, yeah. The it's called war the war drum. Um, and I wonder, are there other themed percussion based instruments that are also death bludgers? <laughs> Death bludgers. That's like the, uh, the guitar sword. Okay, the guitar it's not sword. Percussion based. Mm -hmm. Um, which isn't. Yeah, you're right, Rick. Uh, the death tambo, the war drum. And the like, guitar sword. I, I feel like they should make something really comical, like the pan flute, and then you like shoot darts <laughs> out of it or something. <laughs> that would be so cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we were in this, we were in this building getting crop dusted by three scorch beasts. And I was like, Rick, what are we going to do? And he's like, I don't know. And then, uh, like my level 92 albino death claw. I stick Perfect. my head up and she's like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, and I was like, oh no. <laughs> yeah. I, I didn't know what we were going to do because three, three scorch beasts and a death claw. I mean, uh, it was looking a little hairy. And at that point, we'd already been playing for like an hour and a half on this journey. So, like, it's not like our ammunition stores were, yeah, yeah. you know, we mm -hmm. were, our cup cup was not overflowing. As and was this, was this in the same place as the magical button? No. Sheldon no. likes to press. No. No, no. Okay. This was south of that vendor. So, like, that area is oh. bad. We started yeah. there. And then we went yeah. even further into the Cranberry Bog. And uh, so I noticed that our quest was taking us down into a building, like a mine that happened to be right below us. So it was like this, like it was like a movie, right? Like you've you fought real hard and then you had to retreat and then you're like trapped. And the only way to go is down in the hole Through. in the ground, yeah. you know, and it's like, all right, Celine, we're going to go into this place and that's how we're going to get out of here. So we like, you know, Thelma and Louise ran out of this place jumped down the cliff and ran into the mine shaft and the door closed behind us and it was quiet. <laughs> and then it was like, what have we done? <laughs> what? And then, and I literally think we're like, well, whatever's down here, we don't have to deal with any scorch beasts. <laughs> no! <laughs> no, no. In the were mine? We, were we wrong? <laughs> Um, oh, we fought it was two. like where they come from. Yeah. Oh. Uh, so, you know, it was like scorch wave after scorch wave. And Shalene at one point was like, my tambo's broken. And I'm like, my grenade launcher's broken. And so <laughs> I hear her like, broken. she's like, you know, like scorched are coming in. A scorch beast is flying through the walls and it's getting us. And I hear her shotgun like, you know. And uh, I've got my, you know, uh, LMG, like, bop, 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 and then it goes click, click. I'm out of ammo for my, for my freaking LMG, and I'm like, I'm, I'm out of ammo. All I have is a shotgun. <laughs> this is not good. And Shalene's like, I found another Tambo. So I hear for the jingle while jangling. I was hitting it with a lead pipe. You were, you were like lead pipe in this thing. <laughs> ding, ding, <laughs> yeah, ding. And, and you, and I killed a scorched, and I luckily found an, uh, another M79 grenade launcher. So I was like grabbed it and loaded up because i had like 100 grenade rounds and uh so we we finished that skirmish barely i mean i was running out of health um i had like no ammo shaleen was i think all your armor was broken wasn't it yeah it, and, it was all broken i think it was mostly broken before we ever went in the yes. cave <laughs> so like we can't take much more of this and we walk into another area and out of this ground crawls a glowing scorch beast we're like oh ah, my ah, lanta ah. <laughs> and uh Luckily, you know, somehow we beat it. I, I was working crowd control with the grenade launcher, and Shalina was just like, I've had enough of you, took the tambo directly to his face. Mm -hmm. And um, we made it out the other side, and we, like, came up this elevator into this little abandoned shack out in the middle of the Cranberry Bog. And it was, like, this, like, weird, like, it was such an epic moment of, I can't believe we went through that, and I can't believe we survived. <laughs> like, it was, like, six total scorch beasts that we had to fight and we were sub 15 level you know and it was just this you know how did we it was this cool moment of we had thing, to go yeah. forward down into the ground is the only way out of the situation <laughs> jeez and um it was a great day it was oh a my great gosh, day it was amazing so huh do you want to continue wow. that was i mean i had more gameplay but that's 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 all so hmm. yeah. so shalim what did you think of all that then Oh gosh, I loved it. I really enjoyed doing the Brotherhood of Steel quest line with Rick. 
And uh, I'm going to talk a little more about the, the beginning of the quest line. All right, all right. Um, so we did basic training together. We did. Oh, I did that with Jess. You go through all the things and mm -hmm. stuff. Yeah, that's yeah, fun, hey? Like three different aspects of basic training. And it was really funny because you started out and it's it's very traditional army style basic mm -hmm. training. And, and Rick is like, Shaleen, I never thought we'd be going through basic training together. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, which one of us is Andy? I guess I'd have to be Andy Dick because my name. And I guess you're Polly Shore. In the army now? Oh man, Shalene is totally Polly Shore. <laughs> I, I guess I'm Andy Dick. I love it. I love it. Woo. Curly hair and all. Well, we're in the army now. <laughs> now we are. We got our papers um, and everything to prove it. But it was so funny. We, there's a, a physical, like an agility test um, in the basic training, and I failed it somehow. I missed a button or something. And uh, I was like, Rick, I'm sorry. I failed the agility test. I. I yeah, I, I also failed it. it. <laughs> also failed it, just like in real life, you know. <laughs> and if I actually had done it, it, yeah, I would have failed it. Rick would have been fine. <laughs> I ran along with you just as like moral support. Actually, I was running yes. along like the pathways. I was like, "Move your butt, soldier." <laughs> it was. It was hilarious. I could just see Shalene like. Oh, I wonder if my postal outfit will get dirty. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, he was going along with me being the drill sergeant. He's like, move, move, move. Jeez, that's awesome. Pick up your feet. If only you had a, like a whistle or something, you know? It was great. But I, I really enjoyed that. I thought that was a clever little quest. Um, we also did a quest. I think it was part of the same. It was it also was. part of the Brotherhood of Steel quest it line, was. wasn't it? We had to get like a government ID. We had to uh, get yes. an official government ID. We needed an we official a, government ID. Which meant a trip to the DMV. This, one, this bar none is the best quest in the entire Fallout game. The best. Really? It's maybe it one of my best. best favorite quests in all of gaming. I can't believe wow. how good it was. It was so perfect. Was, I really, we can't spoil anything because that's the whole, the whole joke behind it. Mm -hmm. I just want to say, I think that this was really similar to what it would be like to actually visit the DMV with Rick. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Long shoot lines, I'm, impatience. I'm gonna shoot him. I'm gonna shoot him. <laughs> Clean's like, don't, don't. You'll aggro all the robots. <laughs> oh man, it was amazing. It was really, really a good quest. So, I Definitely recently, uh, I I recently had to renew my license. Um, so this is kind of an, a, an off off to the side story, but um, my partner and I went to Palm Springs a mm -hmm. couple weeks couple weeks ago, right? Florida. And uh, yeah. <laughs> Um, so we get to the airport, uh, and we, we go to the car rental booth desk thing and the guy's like, okay, can I see both of your licenses? Cause he was renting the vehicle, but he wanted to add me as a additional driver. And so I give my license and, and the guy at the counter says, well, he's like, I got some bad news. And we were like, what, like what's going on? And the guy's like, and he looks at me and he's like, well, I got to, uh, first of all, wish you a belated happy birthday. And I also have to tell you that your license is expired. <laughs> so we're like here and like trying to rent this car and my license is expired. So he had to do all the driving and it was kind of awesome. I mean, definitely, <laughs> definitely planned right on my part. Um, but we get <laughs> Oops, back I and had I had no to idea. go to, yeah, I had to go to the DMV and, uh, it was a terrible, it was, it was probably the best experience I've had at the DMV, but also the worst because the first thing was there was no lineup and it was fantastic. There's always a lineup at the DMV. I hate it. The second thing was they had to take a new picture and it was terrible. <laughs> I look like a criminal, you guys. I doubt that. You're very oh, bullshit. it was so bad. And the girl at the counter, I'm like, oh man, I'm like, you can really tell that like, that was five years ago and this is like five years now and she like what happened she's like i think you look fine i'm like no you don't understand like was she, was she was she like so is your name ted bundy or gary gilmore yeah pretty much yeah <laughs> the only thing i was missing was like a prison number <laughs> it was so bad uh anyways s side tangent continue on with your gameplay shaleen oh yeah 
but I really enjoyed doing that DMV quest line with uh, with Rick. That was really funny. Was amazing. Outside the building, it was great. So here we were uh, outside the building, and Rick had gone to get a cup of coffee or something. Yes. So he's just standing in the doorway, <laughs> oh, and I was yeah. just hanging around on the lawn, and uh, and some guy walks up and like immediately sprints back and hides behind a bush, and he's like. <laughs> out from behind this bush and I, I wave at him i'm like hello hello friend how are you thumbs up hi how are you and he waves at me and then he comes out and like looks at rick and i realize rick is wearing this massive intimidating set of power armor and he he looks like a force to be reckoned with he's carrying a, a very large gun he looks very scary uh so i beckon to him like it's okay go ahead come on in and he was scared to go in the building to do his quest because he was scared of Rick. <laughs> it was so funny. So I was like, come on, come on. And he like edges around the corner, <laughs> comes up to me. And then he like runs to the door. <laughs> it That's was awesome. so funny. I guess he I was like, I guess he's like, maybe they'll ambush me. Yeah. Nah. He, he, uh, like he trusted me, I feel like, because I, you know, Jim Justice is a very welcoming dude. Yeah, but um, you looked so stern and implacable in your in your power armor. So, yeah. I'm Jim Justice's bodyguard. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's sort of accurate, actually. <laughs> sort of accurate. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it was really great. Um, I, I really think that the Brotherhood of Steel quest line has been handled very beautifully. We haven't mm -hmm. finished it yet. But so I sad. remember there being a lot of criticism in the beginning. Uh, before the game had come out about the fact that the Brotherhood of Steel was even included in the game. But I, I really think that it was handled well. I, yeah. I think it was a, a very good inclusion. I, I love listening to the hollow tapes and hearing these stories. I, I think it's beautifully done. I bet you Gerfuffle would say otherwise. <laughs> kudos, kudos. <laughs> oh, uh, Gerfuffle. I can't wait to get to the Enclave so that I can relate to Gerfuffle again. <laughs> I, I, you know, I feel like it's funny when a company's like, you know, this comp, you know, when people complain, I can't believe this company that built this world, um, you know, changes things about this world that they've created. Oh, it's kind of like, it's their game, <laughs> and it's mm -hmm. this this little Brotherhood of Steel yeah. tangent is kind of an open and shut case, like most of everybody else in this place. It's open. People and just shut. want people just want something to say about everything and it's just like yeah you know just if there hadn't been a brotherhood of steel presence in the game i'm sure there would have been an outcry the about it's not even full yeah without the they put it there steel. people complain they don't put it there people complain so you know but i, I think it's really it's a beautiful quest line yeah, and i i've quite enjoyed it so we should play some more of it later mm-hmm so you guys, I've talked before about the, um, I, I've talked about how I've sort of been homeless in Fallout 76, right? <laughs> My camp consisted of the smallest cook fire possible, mm -hmm. the smallest no. stash box possible. Let's just say that I no. have bunk beds in my house her, for when her, Shaleen comes yeah. over. Her camp yeah. consisted of your, mine, Jess's, and Archon's camp. That's what her camp consisted of. Yeah, yeah. I was a freeloader. I, I would I would sleep over at Vendor's house. He had bunk beds built. Okay. I would go to Rick's house, milk his cow. <laughs> oh, I forgot to mention. Um, anytime Shaleen would say, like, hey, I'm going to go milk your cow, I would be like, that's fine. Go ahead. He's out back. Ugh. She's out back. Um, and uh, <laughs> I know I had to check myself. Yeah. There. He um, always says he. I, yeah. like, I wonder. Hmm. Or, <laughs> Rick. Hmm. Uh, <laughs> anyway, um, so yeah, <laughs> so the first time, the first time, Shaleen's like, uh, I told Shaleen you could milk the cow. She's like, I'm gonna go milk the cow. So I'm like, fine, go ahead. Uh, you know, Bessie's out back or whatever we named her, and um, so <laughs> I'm in the house. I can't see up back, but I'll hear this. <laughs> like the cows, and the cows shuffling around a lot faster than it was. I was like, what did you do? Did you check his prostate, too? Uh, so, so, 
the cow does always sound a little traumatized. It makes it noise. It does. It does. It's weird, so, you guys. So last night she's like, "I'm gonna milk your cow before I leave. I'm make sure it's out back." Five seconds later, <laughs> it just runs around a bit. <laughs> and if you spam E, if you milk it, like if you try to milk it a couple times, it will kick you. <laughs> Really? Yeah. Oh, you try to spam great. the E button and like I guess yank all of its udders at once. It just tries to punt you. Oh, that's, <laughs> that's like fantastic. Yeah. Many cows do not enjoy being milked and will kick you. Um the the best uh the, the most common target though is the bucket of, of milk. You know, they'll kick over your bucket. So yeah. Um that was probably more than you guys ever wanted to know about spoken <laughs> like a true somebody who's lived the experience yeah. i've milked a cow once maybe at like a farm <laughs> show novelty thing like look ma and then you yeah. anyway shaleen your house looks kept great a milk cow, like always they they kept a milk cow until until like a couple years ago they had a milk oh my cow, so. wow yeah old milk man <laughs> jeez Hmm. Uh, but anyways, so I was living as a homeless person. I would I would go to Rick's house, use his benches, milk his cow. I would go to vendors, sleep in the bunk beds. Um, <laughs> and, um, one day I was playing with Archin and Jess. And um, Archin had gone to my camp, which was, of course, just like a tiny little cook fire and, and a tiny little stash box. And, and I mm -hmm. found out he had gone to my camp. I was like, oh, Archin, don't go to my camp. Like, there's nothing there. And, like oh it's fine i'm using your cook fire and um jess is like really sad that my camp is is sad and she's like well i could put you a piano and she's like i'm gonna go to, to your camp and put you a piano i'm like oh, okay and then pretty soon um she puts um she's talking about all this stuff she's doing at my camp and uh, i was at jess's camp while she's doing this right mm -hmm. jess has a glorious camp can i just talk about that Oh my goodness, Jess's camp is amazing. Her camp budget is fully maxed out. She has this massive building on, on the lawn of the Greenbrier and um, adhesive farm, like three stories. Lovely it's incredible. Armatures. It's an amazing place. It's an amazing place. It's a Hilton. It's a Hilton in Appalachia. So I decide to go and check out what Jess is doing at my camp. And I, I tell her, like, I feel like I'm on Extreme Home Makeover Appalachia edition. <laughs> <laughs> and Archon's like, hey, you want some brick walls? And I'm like, sure, I want some brick walls. It's like, how, how about uh, some wind chimes? You want some wind chimes? Uh, of course. It's I'm just like one. Mike Holmes comes in there and he's like, this is, <laughs> it's mold everywhere. Like, <laughs> Yeah, Archon's like, how, how about a Nuka-Cola clock? Of course I want a Nuka-Cola clock. So uh, I come and, and they're like, uh, move that bus. And I see my new home, my new Appalachia home. <laughs> and it's so cute, guys. I have the cutest little house now. I have a little tiny house with brick walls. And uh, Archon made me a nice bed. Uh, I have a nice stove and a nice piano that Jess left. And it's such a cute little house. I put up some balloons and some streamers and um, a little a little turret to keep it safe. And it's so cute. I love my little house. So that was a lot of fun. Um, and I really enjoyed showing it off to you guys. I was like, well, you yeah. guys have to come see my little house. It's so great. It's It's just, it's perfectly situated. Like if you walked by it, you'd never know that it was somebody's <laughs> camp. I actually thought that it was like part of like, you know, the train tracks there, but it, it's great. I love it. I love that the, the piano is just like tucked away in behind the door as you open the door. It's just there. Yeah, you when know, you open the like, door, the bench clips through the door a bit. It does. You, you have really to be careful when you're closing the door. Yeah. Because sometimes you sit at the piano instead of closing the door. <laughs> Shaleen's little uh, IKEA home, you know, just <laughs> maximize that space. It's part of the tiny house movement. <laughs> it's so good i love my little house it's so cute home sweet home yeah i uh i got evicted you guys what happened? i got evicted so i started doing the main storyline mm -hmm. and you know how you got to go to the overseer's camp and then you got to place a camp 
and you got to go through that whole process. Mm -hmm. Well, placing the camp to finish the quest meant losing my house oh, where I was at. That's right. Yeah. So I placed my camp, lost everything. Well, of course, I had it blueprinted, whatever I could blueprint. By the way, the blueprinting is terrible. Yes. Um, but I went up north and I found a new spot. And there's no super mutants. There's absolutely nothing around for miles. It's fantastic. I love it. It's on a cliff overlooking Appalachia, and it's beautiful. And uh, yeah, it's it's nice. I, I finally got myself a uh, a little fusion reactor generator, so all of the lights turn on now. Before it was like only half of the lights would turn on in the house. <laughs> it was like outs. terrible. Um, but yeah, I. I'm kind of with you, Shaleen, on having the smaller, smaller pad um, because it's easier to blueprint. You mm -hmm. can blueprint the whole thing and then you don't have to worry about having to rebuild. But Jess brought up a good point to me the last time we were playing together was that the whole point of moving your camp is rebuilding. Uh, and the fact that you can, you know, kind of rebuild is part of the game and, you know, mm -hmm. design new things and stuff. So, yeah, yeah, yeah I kind of like that. Uh, I played with Archon and Jess for several hours that day. It was really fun. Uh, we went to Tanagra Town. And every time that I say Tanagra Town, I just want to make a joke about Darmok and Jalad at Tanagra. <laughs> <laughs> mm. wow. um, oh, man, you're such a gem. So right. we gem. went to Tanagra Town. And you guys know how bad I am at, at jumping puzzles in video games. You yeah. guys have have firsthand experience of this. I'm bad at jumping. Any kind of 3D platforming is is gonna go badly if I'm involved. And that's basically what Tanagra Town is. And I guess there's this key card that's somehow significant to getting some kind of cool power armor paint. And Jess wanted it, so that's why we were there. And they were like, hey, Shaleen, you know, while we're here, you, you got to get this key card or whatever. I'm like, okay, sure, I'll get the key card. And we had to climb in this little house that was in the top of a tree, and it was super weird. And you had to jump from one part of the house to the other because there was a big chunk that was missing. And this is in, like, the third floor of the house. And <laughs> they both hop over and, and grab the key card. And I'm like, guys... I'm not as agile as you are. This is going to end well. Like, it's not going to go well. And Archon's like, it's fine, Shaleen. Get a running start. You're going to be fine. You can do it. And I'm like, okay, guys. I'm going to give it a try. So I back up. I get, like, a running start. I jump, and I clear the house entirely. <laughs> and jump off the side of the giant tree and drop 500 feet to my death. <laughs> Oh man. It was incredible. We laughed so hard at that. Um, so I had to climb the whole stupid tree again to try and get that stupid key card. I finally got it. You have to take me there. I want to get that key card now. It was really good. Yeah, we'll have to go. It's a fun, fun location. And while we were in that little house, I I happened to look at this one cabinet, and this cabinet is <laughs> full of grenades there are so many grenades in there and i was like oh my gosh you guys there are like 50 grenades in this cabinet it's amazing <laughs> and archon's like oh that's my stuff i was over encumbered so i, I put that stuff in there you know, to, so i can make the jump and i'm like archon i'm gonna take them <laughs> he's like well sure man i need to play i need okay. to play with archon more often Jeez. Yeah. okay uh, he's like, leave my weapons, please. <laughs> <laughs> so I steal all of Archon's grenades, and it's it's like fifty grenades. <laughs> <laughs> well, obviously and he we wasn't went using to Harper's them. Ferry, <laughs> and I spent the next hour throwing grenades at Harper's Ferry. <laughs> it was amazing. It was such a good time, and I was like, thank you, Archon, for letting me steal your grenades. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's um, awesome. I was playing by myself a couple of days ago. I had just logged on for the purpose of buying the postman uniform. Um, that was all I really cared about, was I just want to log on real quick, buy the postman uniform, and then I was probably going to log off. But I decided to play a little bit, and I went to Huntersville as part of Rose's quest line. And Huntersville is full of super mutants. 
And I got a really strange glitch there, you guys. And I like to call this glitch the milk of human kindness. <laughs> oh. I walked in to Huntersville and there were all these mutants. I was sneaking up on them and I whip out my shotgun and I shoot the super mutant. And I realized that none of them are bothered by my presence. None of them are shooting back. They're just kind of milling around and they're not completely ignoring me. They look at me. Sometimes they'll make a comment about how I'm there and their heads all track me, you know, when I walk around, but they're not hostile. Huh. It was amazing. So I, I went forward and did the quest and, and finished my objective completely unhindered by these super mutants. And I thought, well, I'm going to do some looting. So I did some looting. And I, I keep expecting them to turn on me and, and I'll be trapped in there with all these high level super mutants, but they never did. It was amazing. Hmm. So I, I decided to just take a bunch of selfies. <laughs> so I great. spent the next 20 minutes just taking pictures in photo mode, <laughs> hanging out with the super mutants. It was fantastic. And they're That's fantastic awesome. pictures. Yeah, they were really good. It was really, really good. But that's, uh, that's, most of the highlights of, of my fallout gameplay i really can't wait for the camera it's gonna be good it's gonna be so good i'm gonna use so much ammo protecting so you guys yeah speaking of snapshots challenge let's get to it so last week's challenge we were asking you guys to do the down and dirty as in go down in the dirty cave and uh <laughs> Take a picture of uh, whatever happens when you go spelunking in the Wendigo cave. We I asked you guys know because I didn't do it. I'm sorry, guys. Don't be mad. Well, I was about to say we asked you guys to go, to go do the dangerous stuff so we don't have to. <laughs> and you guys, indeed, you guys delivered. So first up, we've got. And by the way, I want to say that when you guys post these, feel free to tag like Fallout and the. Uh, there's like another one, like Fallout screenshots, because some of your screenshots are so good. That they can't just stay on our tiny little nobody goes there hashtag. True. These things are fantastic. So anyway, mm -hmm. um, the first one's from Captain Bones, and it's this black and white almost. It's not black and white, obviously, because there's a lot of red blood just everywhere, and bones. Captain Bones. There's bones everywhere, and it's not bones. Oop, I, my pad. Uh, 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 there. Um, I don't really know what's going on, but he uh, just posted this screenshot, and he says, "Creepy cave is creepy." Looks like there's some brain fungus. There's a lot of brain there and the some blood. Like it. It's good. So the next up is uh, Darth Mungo. And he says, visit Wendigo Cave, they said. It will be fun, they said. Well, here's me strolling the hell out of there with my lifetime supply of nope. <laughs> <laughs> I like that they had time to add a Fallout 76 frame to the picture. <laughs> it's so great. <laughs> the next up is Matt Crumley. Go to the Wendigo cave, they said. It'll be fun, they said. <laughs> <laughs> that wearing that the hat, had to be coordinated. Wearing the hat of liquid courage helps. And so <sighs> he's he's standing in the cave with two sparklers in his beer hat. That's great. Love the beer hat. The beer hat I love good. the two sparklers. The sparklers, man. That's so good. Oh, it's fantastic. Next up is uh, Pippinay. Uh, Wendigon is what he says. And he's crouched next to a dead glowing <laughs> Wendigo. That's awesome. That's right. We were going to name this podcast Windigon with the Wind, weren't we? <gasps> that was another one, but no. That's we were, right. We were going we were gonna to call one of them. Uh, some men just want to watch the crackle berries burn. Anyway, we need to make a list. We do. We do. And this pin it so we'll forget it. A list that we'll never <laughs> for, for our audio listeners, we often uh, will pin things in our, our personal chat uh, in the discord of ideas that we have for the show. And then we never, never. revisit them. Uh, so, <laughs> um, but, but Seraphin certainly, uh, visited the cave here. Seraphin Lou, this is his picture. It kind of looks like there's a big daddy back there. That power armor. Yeah, I think it's right. the Raider, but it looks like a big daddy. Really um, cool. Screenshot. But he says dark, dank, dismal, dripping dung on my duds. Damn. When to go. <laughs> <laughs> and it's also another dead glowing wind to go. And he, he and someone else are in power armor. Is that That's a haiku? Uh, I think dismal. No, nope. I don't think so. 
uh, this I one's, love it. It feels this, like a it feels like a haiku. It does. This one is from Unlooted Vault. It says, uh, "At that Fallout show, feels like I'm playing Limbo. No one to go in cave today. Just a friendly corpse offering me a beer." <laughs> I love I see the, the beer. You see the beer? It do- <laughs> it's just like sticking up out of the dirt. <laughs> and there she was, the Lady of the Lake, holding aloft yeah. the beer. I then became awesome. king of my own castle. <laughs> That's probably the winner for me. <laughs> really um, I love the screenshot. It's so good. It's really nice, actually. I like the black and white. I know. White. That's what I was saying. They need to like show these, you know? Um, so then there's uh, Wasteland Baker. Found one to go cave after being led astray and ending up in a cave with a level 91 glowing death claw. Yikes. I took this pick and went a bit further, then promptly died. <laughs> oh, no. The last picture of Wasteland Baker seen yeah. alive. I love that uh, the tag is Wasteland Baker and he's wearing the chef's chef hat. hat. <laughs> right? It's really good. Coincidence or correlation? You be the judge. Correlation. And that's it for this week's challenge. Oh, man. Those were so good. Great job, so, everyone. Next week, what are we doing? We're doing the uh, build a Advertise billboard. Advertise our show. Build a yes. billboard. Make a TFS Shamelessly, billboard. Shamelessly, we have asked you to make... A billboard advertising this podcast in your yes. Case. Oh, I can't. I really hope that some of these are really cool. I and uh, watch yeah. no one do it. <laughs> don't don't limit it to uh, to you know just just the words that follow show. You know, add some lights oh, and yeah. some Helvetia streamers and make it, make it all kinds of different colors and big and glowy. We want to go like this punk is rock. probably the most shameless thing we've ever done. And I love we want to it. go punk rock brilliant. flyer, like flyer everything you can basically. And I, I really wish. So in arc in arc, what you can do is you can, um, you can take screenshots on your PC and then upload them into the game and put them on a canvas and frame them and hang them in your house. Mm-hmm. It's amazing. I, I wish I wish you could do that in Fallout uh, 76 because it, my house would just be decked out in that Fallout show. Like, that would be <laughs> nice, just... but at the same time, I'm glad that's not possible. Oh, it yeah. Because it'd be like, you know, yeah. it would just be, it would just be, no. it would just be pictures. Well, I'm that. excited. I mean, there's no, there's no stipulations or regulations on what people can and cannot do with the billboards. Yes. Is that no, yeah? Just just advertise, advertise. Yep, it'd be great. We just love games that follow show or games that yeah, and, uh, and take a picture. And then when you take a picture of said billboard advertisement, hopefully in front of the overseers camp where everyone will see it. <laughs> post that <laughs> or in White Springs or any of the uh, <laughs> stations yes, where I you trade like stuff. Yes. <laughs> post that to Twitter using hashtag TFS Challenge um please try to get all the entries in before the thir- the thursday before the show that way i have time to put them where they need to be and you did the mention show. that these are submitted via twitter right yeah i said tweet these to twitter okay. using the hashtag tfs challenge your billboard advertisement photos. Hmm. i have a question um so w- how do you get the lettering there's there's lettering know. there's lettering like plans and stuff be creative. Mm. Be creative. Okay. There's that's going to be tough. Well, it's quite we'll a see. challenge. We will see. That, yeah, that's the challenge may be getting the plans for lettering. <laughs> that's just that's That'll be but, next uh, week's challenge will be to make the billboard. <laughs> so anyway, I'm so excited to see what advertisements await us. Yeah, I'm excited. We're going to move on to our lore. And I thought it would be interesting to talk about Ultrasight because it's kind of new. Um, and since we're playing a lot of Fallout 76, let's just keep this Fallout 76 themed. Uh, it's a new crafting material introduced in Fallout 76. It's used in crafting the most powerful weapons and armor in the game. Um, I got some Ultrasight stuff. It's pretty cool. Can't wait to use it when I hit level 50. Got a couple of mods that also take Ultrasight. Thank sure. goodness you mentioned that because I would have scrapped I know, that. I know. <laughs> um, uh, anyway. Uh, the ore can be processed at a chem bench into Ultrasight scrap, then used for crafting. The problem is, though, and here's a weird thing, that the ore cannot be smelted if it wasn't delted from your stash box. It can only be smelted if it's delted from your inventory. It's terrible. <laughs> so, note that. <laughs> anyway, you can find uh, Ultrasight ore at Fisher's. 
mineral deposits after a nuke strike, and you can find them in certain mines and caverns. I forget where. Oh, it was in the cave uh, that we went to, the Cave of Wonders, yes, um, where there was the a lot of ultracite. There was a lot of ultracite there. So, uh, it's similar in properties to coal. It burns, and they use it for energy. Uh, it's so similar, in fact, Poseidon Energy retrofitted an entire coal-burning power plant to use ultracite as its fuel source. Uh, ultracite also kind of looks like the highest grade of fuel, anthracite. However, due to some power terminal or terminal entries and stuff, uh, ultracite is better or would be better than anthracite in that world. So um, we can see why a lot of different like companies like AMS were trying to mine the cheapest and fastest way possible all the ultracite they could once they found it. So uh, hmm. that's ultracite in a nutshell. Uh, it's one of the most rare items I think you can get to build powerful weapons and gear. So when you get to high level stuff, save all the ultracite and keep it in your inventory when it, when you go to use it. Hmm. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, it seems to be native to Appalachia too, uh, because you don't hear about it anywhere else. Uh, I, maybe it's a result of the, I don't know if there's an origin story for it. If it's like an origin from the scorched or just nukes and coal, I mean, who knows what happens when you nuke coal. Is is ultracite? Is that a fallout thing, or is there actually it, like a compound? It's a fallout thing. It's it's mm. it's IRL kind of anthracite, like you had said. Was anthracite, sort of yeah. analogous yeah. to that anthracite. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. So. Huh. Yeah. I also wanted to talk about our weapon this week. Uh, is one of my favorites that I've been using is the fifty caliber machine gun. Oh, it's so. This good. thing's a beast. It's, it's awesome. so good. It's like the best weapon you can get. It's so good. It's a 50 caliber machine gun. It's belt fed, um, and it's a heavy weapon, fully automatic. I would and prefer a grass fed. <laughs> <laughs> I prefer organic, thank you. Yeah. So, uh, it holds 250 rounds per per box magazine because you put a box of bullets on the side of it. So it holds 250 rounds. You're first able to use it when you hit level 25. Currently, mine is rated at level 45, and I got all of the heavy weapon damage modifiers I could. So it's doing like 60 damage per bullet for that thing, which is pretty good. Hmm. There are two mods. Um, well, actually, technically, there's one mod. Uh, heavy Barrel, it does more damage. But there's also something called a Prime Receiver. No one really knows what the stats of that are yet. I have a feeling they've kind of data mined that out from the upcoming... Mm -hmm. uh, update so there will be two mods that you can get for that there is a variant for it a named legendary variant uh, that you can only get in survival mode as a reward it's called the action hero and i can't help but like kind of think of arnold schwarzenegger you know with this the like, last you know. action hero yeah yeah so it's called the action hero it just does more damage <laughs> it's nothing special it's just it's like this does more death here take um it's not a duma <laughs> it's not a duma <laughs> anyway yeah, so uh, I wish I had some motive to play survival so I could get the, the action hero, but mm -hmm. oh well. you can find the 50 caliber uh, machine gun in various locations. I found mine in the back of a truck. Uh, That's <laughs> which, awesome. When I saw it, I, I like quoted Woody, Har uh, Woody Harrelson, like, thank God for rednecks. Um, so, yeah, it was, it was pretty funny. It was like laying in the back of a truck near a downed vertebrate. You can also make it from plans. I found the plans for it as well, so I can't wait to hit 50, and then I'll build my own level 50 variant of it. And it can be dropped from bosses as a reward. It's affected by the heavy gunner, both the uh, standard perk cards and the expert and master perk cards. It's also affected by the bare arms perk card, which lowers its weight, uh, the lock and load, the bullet shield, and the one guy army and stabilized perk cards all benefit heavy weapons, which I will hope to gather those soon i've just been like get getting all of the damage modifiers i can all of those perk cards because uh i want to do all the damages to everything in the game so it's kind of a stupid build now that i think about it but i have fun. the 50 i have the 50 cal but i never have the ammo to use it i make ammo all the time so that the, last night when we were playing i started out with 1600 rounds and uh, i went back to my base with uh 500 i think I'm surprised you even had that many left. I might not have had that much left. It was it was definitely not a lot. Yeah, I definitely so. want to start using bigger, heavier guns, I think. 
the the 50 caliber rifle is or the 50 caliber machine gun is very accurate it you it doesn't have any sort of aim down sights functionality it does mm-hmm. like center the gun so like the barrel kind of points straight but there's yeah. no there's no iron sights for it you're just kind of firing yeah. more accurately from the hip the uh, thing that i like about the 50 cal is that when your character fires it from the hip it's they kind of do like that stand back kind of motion mm-hmm. Uh, like you do with the minigun and a lot of other heavy weapons, but it's really not that heavy if you look at it while you're holding it. It's not that big of a heavy weapon. No, um, they're bracing for the recoil of a 50 caliber round. You know, they're kind of yeah, like exactly. It, it's cool if you look at the gun too as it fires, the barrel reciprocates. Mm-hmm. Um, I like that they added that little. One of the things that I've been finding weird with games is what hills they choose to die on. Mm hmm. So like Battlefield Five, you can't barely shoot over a hill sometimes. Like your your gun will be over the hill, but then you fire and you see dirt fly up, and you're like, "This is this is terrible clipping." Like I want to fire over the hill without like popping my whole head up, you know. And yet, when you stab someone with your knife, their face literally winces in that game. They're like, "Oh," you know, it winces in pain, and you're like, "So this, that's the hill you're gonna focus." That that's okay, fine, sure. Um, like <laughs> cool, you know, like whatever hill you pick. And I feel like they did that with this, like, we're going to make the barrel reciprocate back and forth in this gun. Yeah. So. The thing about 50 cal is that, um, like Dot 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 says in the chat, it's pretty heavy. Yeah. Uh, but at the same time, it's not something that you find what while you you're rummaging. You know, uh, the only way I found it is having the uh, lucky perk on like having the mm. more more ammo found that's that's mm-hmm. the only thing i've ever mm-hmm. found so but yeah because yeah, usually i'm finding like shells 10 38, mil shotguns, 38 yeah. 308 yeah you definitely yeah. don't find it it's definitely a rare a rare ammo and that's why i like the lmg because it takes 308 and you find that everywhere yeah i have a so. lot of all the ammo we know shaleen is like <laughs> she's the ammunition of appalachia <laughs> you guys i'm like a dragon <laughs> that hoards ammo <laughs> I love it's ridiculous. Oh, I miss those commercials from ammunition. So Come I get hate the to kind of help. Yeah. What? Oh my God. That's, oh, I love those commercials. Come buy the gun that helped kick Australia's ass. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, we never fought Australia. Yeah. Oh, that's um, so good. But anyway, yeah, that's it I for hate, the weapon of the week. I hate to kind of jump back to our gameplay, but um, there was this moment where I was like, man, I really need some ammo. <laughs> and I'm like, and Shalene's like, well, you know, what kind of ammo do you need? And I'm like, well, I need some 45 and I need some shells. And she's like, oh, well, I have like 4,000 of each. <laughs> like, Which you want some? like a thousand of each one? Like, <laughs> so the melee like, yes. She does. It's ridiculous. <laughs> awesome. I like having things you guys need too. It, it makes me happy to be able to help you out. So, Oh man, it's so good. It's just so great. I have all this ammo, and I mostly just tambo my way <laughs> across the waist. Awesome. So, should we read an email? Yeah. Do you want to do all three? We're already pushing server limits. Mm, I'm worried about server short. limits. They're all what? pretty short. Let's just okay. read them. Awesome. Hello, you take the sir first or one? madam. Yes. I just first have to say I love your show, and I hope it goes on for forever. I am a listener from the days of another podcast, which shall not be named. I first got into your show by just randomly searching Fallout in the podcast searcher. I really hope that you guys continue to make this amazing podcast. And then if you guys ever need an official runaway and hide from the death clause guy, just call me up. I also have a question. So Bethesda said that there would be no NPCs, but then we see things like Scorched. Are those NPCs or just random enemy AIs? I was curious because they seem one and the same. I hope you don't get lost in the wasteland, Chase. And that's a pretty solid question. Technically, an NPC is any character in the game that is not a player character. So technically, that's an NPC. But what they mean when they say NPCs is um, basically a character that you can communicate with. Mm -hmm. They also say specifically no human NPCs. Yes. Yeah, it's confusing, non-player character versus a random enemy. And, uh, like, I would say that the pro- the Protectrons that you trade with 
are technically NPCs. I absolutely agree. So are the ones in the events, like the messenger, Mr. Handy. Absolutely. He's an NPC. Mm -hmm. The insult so, bot. NPC. Yeah, there's a gray line. There's a gray line there. But so. Rick's right. They said specifically no human NPCs. That's true. That's true. If we're splitting yep. hairs. Yes. Yeah. Well, we all know that gamers love to split hairs. Yeah. Yeah. Aaron writes us to the uh, from the from the next email. He says, uh, "Hi, ladies, gentlemen, and robot." Another email from me, Aaron. Last time I emailed you, I was on the fence about buying Fallout seventy six. Well, on Valentine's Day, I finally hunkered down and purchased it. The following is what followed an entire two day experience. Everyone was really nice when I expected to get taken advantage of from the higher level day one player, but to my surprise, my first interaction with another player went like this. I was AFK feeding my one-year-old son. I look up to see a guy in excavator power armor nudging me to a paper bag. I asked, are you letting me have all this? They threw up a thumbs up emote. They gave me weapons, ammo, and healing supplies. Then I got to building a camp. And after completing what right now is my favorite quest, back to basics, I found a blueprint for a larger water purifier so I can now make purified water. I haven't played much in the last few days due to my job and being a father of three, but the time I did get to spend was way better than what the critics made it out to be. So thank you for writing in, Aaron. I think that pretty much sums it up for me. Great story. That's pretty much my experience as well. Well, yeah, I, uh, I also think I've he's... never had a, another player fire their weapon at me. Not yet. I also think Knock he's... He's right where it's better than what the critics say, although he's playing after they've patched it. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Sorry. But. Mm -hmm. Shall so, we want to take the next one? Uh, I'll, I'll take it. She got the first one. Um, so uh, Obtuse, who is our resident rebuttalist, him and Grafuffle have been rebutt yes, rebuttalist. Obtuse began the rebuttals. Oh, it was he, great. He was the original emailer. That began the rebuttals. <laughs> I saw off my rebuttal, you do your rebuttal to my rebuttal. Uh, so Obtuse writes, just wanted to say how much it warmed my ancient ghoul heart hearing the tiny baby Mariah Massacre that emailed with Fallout 4 as her first deep game. Woof, that's a sentence. Whew. That was adorable. As a middle schooler, <laughs> this is just getting great. As a middle schooler, wasn't this the guy that played the ISOs first? Wait, have we vetted this email? Uh -huh. <laughs> I don't know. We've all the emails. Okay. okay, okay, just checking. As a middle schooler, my favorite game experience was after the original Doom that came in the snail mail on floppy three and a half inch discs. Nice. That was my first ever Fallout. I was 15. She's barely past that age with almost the newest Fallout, and y'all are three halfway between me and Mariah in generation. Basically, Fallout means family. 76 has brought us together in this way, and despite any imperfections that remains true because it's genuinely fun and helping each other has been one of a kind gaming experience still i hope they realize that we need ui slash action bar customization and responsiveness community modding to the game and creation club like thing for sky what does that mean is sky the, is the limit servers oh, and thing content. for sky is the limit servers and content gotcha and a system to store perk cards we don't use in the build out of a w out of the way so uh swapping isn't slow irritating in denver that's actually that would be smart. nice to be able that's to sort your awesome cards somewhere like that like if you could mm -hmm. favorite the ones that you use a lot mm -hmm. yeah uh they've yet to acknowledge these needs really at all and it's uh it's true that no one has really asked for a survival mode uh the game should work right and be super playable first so we can all enjoy the full potential of these new content updates i'm looking forward to joining the discord i didn't realize you guys had that going take care obtuse obtuse um he's right that no one's asked for survival mode but everything that were changes that people wanted to make to fallout 76 kind of denoted to them that hey we should take these and put them in a different game type and then leave this one alone so it's not that anyone asked for survival it's just all I the changes that people were asking for survival though but they didn't ask for another game type they just wanted it to be one way or the other where like some people were like i don't want pvp at all and some people were like i want more like this get rid of the stupid slap i want more hardcore pvp yeah. So they were like and the best of both worlds. And in trying to accommodate both of these audiences, yeah. Bethesda satisfied neither one. And that's so. and I'm I think... definitely glad that they kept it separate, though. 
Yeah, and I think that's yeah, I think good idea. I think that was the best choice where it's like, all right, get rid of the slap damage, put the people who want to PvP over here, put the people who mainly want to PvE over here. Mm-hmm. And it and it, and it works out, I think. Um Bethesda's working on a lot of different things, so they can't get to everything, but he does bring up a lot of good points. I mean, um, you know, more so than community modding, you know what this game needs? Clans and guilds. It needs more community in the game. It needs guilds. So you can all build in the same building area. You know what I mean? Right. Or you could put up your billboard that says that Fallout show and start a that Fallout show community on Appalachia. <laughs> Think of how cool it would be is if we had some actual like guild. We could say this is the TFS guild. Yeah, I think what I want to do, though, is, like, move my house closer to, like, you guys, and then, ha- like, you know, then I'm, like, neighbors. Well, I'm I think planning be- on moving, so we should, yeah. maybe maybe we should talk about finding a place. We should, like, to hire a realtor and, like, pick a location. And- I'm pretty happy with the location of my camp, though. But it gets nuked all the time. Yeah. It does get nuked sometimes, yeah. Well, I'll move over on the other side of the mountain range. Like, just, Come like, up next to the you, north, like- you guys. Come to Canada. <laughs> Can't go that far. There's a reason why I live in the north on the on the map, okay? I can't go saying. I can't go that far because there's, there's white a fence. Walkers up there. <laughs> there's white walkers. <laughs> oh man. Oh man. Well, I think that is the end of our show. Are there any announcements? Um are there any announcements, Shaleen? Uh send a self-addressed stamped envelope to P.O. Box 396, Corona, New Mexico, 88318, and we will send you some stickers. We've gotten a few of those in and sent out some stickers, but I still have a giant box of stickers here, guys. Mm-hmm. So uh, if you would like some that Fallout show or game stack stickers, uh, well, I'll send both. So, and if you're in Canada, send me a personal message, and I will make sure that you will also get some stickers, so so that you don't have to pay international international rates. Uh, just send me a personal message on Twitter or on Discord, and then I can uh, get those stickers out to you guys. Shalene, have you been missing? Uh-huh. What? I was going to say, have you been missing Survival Horror Sundays? I have, yeah. I think My life gonna... has an empty, empty place well, where Survival uh, Horror Sunday should let's be. Let's fill it with severed limbs. Okay. Uh, we're it, gonna... Maybe it's it's sort of like there's a, a dead space inside me. <laughs> Ow, that hurt. Um, well, this Sunday, we'll be doing a Survival Horror Sunday. I don't know what time yet. Um, probably closer towards the night maybe six or so but we'll talk about that later we'll announce what time that'll be but stay tuned for survival horror sundays this sunday but until then you can tweet at the show uh by using the following twitter handles at that fallout show you can tweet it we just love games at we just love games you can tweet at me at rick mcvick you can tweet at vendortron at vendortron in you can tweet at Shaleen at Shaleen L. You can find us on Facebook.com slash that fallout show and also Facebook.com slash groups slash that fallout show, as well as our network, which is Facebook.com slash groups slash we just love games and Facebook.com slash we just love games. You can email us at info at we just love games.com. Like this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel, which is also YouTube.com slash we just love games. Twitch.tv slash We Just Love Games is where we do our live streams every Friday at 6.30 Mountain, 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, and also, you can find us on iTunes and Stitcher Radio. You can also find us on Spotify and iHeartRadio and other platforms like that. If you leave us a review on iTunes with some texty text and five stars, we will shout you out at the beginning of the show that you leave the review for. You can check out our other show, GameStack. Uh, which is also on those platforms. And we do Twitch We do Twitch streams when we can, uh, like this Sunday. So thank you so much for listening to our show. Shaleen, what is the last word? Hard work is happy work. I, um, uh, I recently reorganized the files, and uh, all my audio is missing. Oh, we forgot to fix that, didn't we? The the ending. I fixed ending. most of them, but we didn't fix X to the vault. So um, I fixed it now. So goodbye. <laughs>